The Colorado Buffaloes rode the success of the option attack the three straight Big 8 championships. But their spark plug, quarterback Darian Hagan's gone now, and so is the offense he ran so well. Meet Cordell Stewart. It's under his leadership, under his right arm, that a new era begins at CU. Can the new offense be more than a passing fancy for Coach Bill McCartney, seeking his fourth straight Big 8 title? In Fort Collins, the Rams are ready once again to contend for a bowl berth. Earl Bruce carries his best recruiting class in years, and he carries a team with a special inspiration to beat that other team from Colorado. The interstate rivalry is back. CU and CSU. It's live from Folsom Field in Boulder. Next. Sports presents CU Buffaloes football. Live from Folsom Field in Boulder, it's the Colorado State University Rams versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Hi, everybody. We're at the foot of the Flatirons, Folsom Field in beautiful Boulder, Colorado. I'm Les Shapiro along with Dave Logan. It's the first full weekend of college football, and Dave, I can't think of a better way to start off. Well, I tell you, college football is an emotional game, and you can't underestimate how a 17, 18, 19-year-old youngster must feel when he runs out in front of a full house. Sometimes it's an overwhelming feeling, but emotion, I'm sure, will play a large role in what happens here today. How about a 50 or 60-year-old gentleman? Earl Bruce and Bill McCartney, I'm referring to, the two coaches of these clubs. They know each other very well. Talking before the game right there, Bill McCartney, of course, a former assistant at Michigan, and Earl Bruce, a former assistant and head coach at Michigan's biggest rival, Ohio State. And then, Dave, we have a couple of young men we need to talk about. The two starting quarterbacks for these clubs, two new guys. Well, two new guys, and certainly the offensive fortunes on both sides of the football will rest largely in the shoulders of Cordell Stewart and Anthony Hill. Stewart is a guy that has a great arm. He's a big, strong guy, 6'3", 205 pounds. He can pull the football down and run with it when he drops back to throw. Same thing for Anthony Hill, not quite as big, maybe a little bit quicker, but he's very dangerous when CSU tries to throw the football. If he doesn't see what he likes, he'll pull it down and he'll gain yards. Well, we're anxious to see CU's new passing offense. We're anxious to see how CSU does in its 100th year of college football. The kickoff is next. Today's game is brought to you by First Federal Bank, by Samsonite, and by Soundtrack, all proud companies for Colorado. And also by Taco Bell, and by Coors Extra Gold. Porter style. Pop quiz. Oh no. Fire away. Which beer do you think is brewed longer? This one overall has better flavor. The darker one. Bingo. All right, homie. Of course, extra gold is brewed far longer than Bud. Seriously? Than Budweiser? 70% longer than Bud. And you know what? I can taste it. Slow brewed for that real beer flavor and color, the way beer was meant to be, which may be why 58% of Bud drinkers prefer Coors Extra Gold. Well, make it 59 and 60. Coors Extra Gold. If you're missing real taste, beer is back. The name says it. Well, there's a big sale at Soundtrack where the prices are so low. Soundtrack won't play games with the biggest names, the ones that we all know. Like a Sony, a Mitsubishi, a Panasonic, a JVC. At Soundtrack, the prices are so low. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I love you people. Soundtrack. Big names. Little prices, guaranteed. Our dogs give you a good run for your money. Our dogs always fetch the paper, too. Greyhound Park, live racing at 62nd in Colorado. 
We're coming at you live from Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado, the home of the CU Golden Buffaloes. It's the opening weekend of college football. Right here we have CU against intrastate rival CSU, and we will get reports from the sidelines throughout this ball game from Mark McIntosh and Jim Hanchett. First, let's start with Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, Les. You guys have talked about Cordell Stewart making his first start in his CU career. We were talking to some people down there on the sidelines before the ball game. They were saying Cordell in the training room before the ball game while he was getting taped. He was so anxious. He was so fired up for this ball game. He could barely sit still so they could tape his ankles. He is definitely fired up. And as you know, Coy Detmer is now running second team behind Stewart because of Vance Joseph's shoulder problems. We talked to some people also there. Don't expect to see Coy Detmer today unless they absolutely have to have him. They still want to preserve that redshirt year. The thinking is Cordell Stewart, you know, he's only thrown two career passes. He needs all the work he can get. So expect Cordell Stewart to go all the way today, and they hope to preserve that redshirt year for Coy Detmer. Now let's go over to the Colorado State sidelines. Our Northern Bureau reporter, Jim Hanson, will be there all afternoon. Jim? And Mark, I'm on the northwest side of the sidelines, so I guess that's all appropriate. Another untested quarterback starting for CSU. Sophomore Anthony Hill, and only his second start. He, too, anxious to get this one underway, as are some of the 3,000 fans who've driven down from uh, Fort Collins for this game. They sold every ticket available up in Fort Collins, and these are folks that carry a grudge. A couple of T-shirts in the stand say, CSU football, 100 years and still no respect. And the respect they want, they can only get by beating CU today. Coach Earl Bruce saying this team is bigger, tougher, stronger. Plus, we'll find out that in just a couple of minutes. Up to you now. Thank you, Jim Hanchett and Mark McIntosh. We'll hear from you guys throughout today's ball game. You're taking a look at one of today's mascots. That's Ralphie the Third, the CU mascot. Seven years old, 1,200 pounds. They're going to let him loose any second now. This Buffalo can get it up to 25 miles an hour, and you'll watch everybody on the sideline getting out of his way. here at Folsom Field, eating up every second of this. Almost 52,000 strong here to see the Buffs season opener. The CSU mascot, of course, is Cam the Ram. Haven't seen her on the sidelines. Might not have made the trip. I understand uh, Cam is a bit sheepish about traveling. And the Rams take the field. Boy, beforehand, when they came out for warm-up drills, the Rams were seemingly... There's Cam the Ram. She did make the trip. The Rams seemingly beating each other up as they were getting ready to take the field just for the warm-up drills. And Dave, I know as a former college and NFL player, you can relate to that very well, can't you? Well, as we talked about, emotion certainly plays a big role. And CSU, I think, emotionally may have the edge in this game, at least initially. This is a team that, as Jim Hanchett was talking about, wants to earn the respect of not only the WAC conference, but in this game, the University of Colorado. And the only way they can do that, they feel, is to beat CU here this afternoon. Well, we already mentioned how nice a day it is here in Boulder. We'll show you exactly how nice. The temperature at game time, 75 degrees. The humidity, 28%. The wind's mild out of the north at 5 miles an hour. Well, this series dates all the way back to 1893. See you with a decided edge, winning 48 of the 65 games played with two ties. The last time they met was 1989, and the Buffs took that one. A close game at the half. And then the Buffs pulled away to win it, 45 to 20. The last CSU win came in 1986, right here at Folsom. The Rams won it 23 to 7. There was a, there was a large blank spot, a dead spot in this series for 30 years, from 1953 to 1983. But Bill McCartney got it back going with the CSU Rams. 
Let's hope that dead spot never happens again. After this contest, the Buffs and Rams meet again in the 1995 season opener in Boulder, and then they play again the year after that, 1996, the season opener for both squads in Fort Collins. There's a look at Earl Bruce with, a, with his back to us. And a look at the Buffs as they get ready to kick off. Mitch Berger with a very strong leg. 21 of his 60 kickoffs last year were not returned because they were put out of the end zone. Back to return for the Rams. One of those gentlemen, the man on the left, Billy Gonzalez. And the other, number two, is the freshman, Van Ward. Well, we told you he had a strong leg, Mitch Berger. So the Rams will start with it at their own 20-yard line. Let's set the Rams offense for you. At quarterback, the sophomore, Anthony Hill, with just one start under his belt in college. And the rest of the offense, the running backs, Van Ward and the fullback, John Ivlo. The receivers are Gonzalez, a good one, Greg Primus, and Smith. And the offensive line, Donnelly, Meyer, Cox, Urasik, and Basso. Van Ward, the first play for scrimmage for the CSU Rams. And he picks up 11 yards and a first down. Ted Johnson, the tackle, and here's the rest of the CU defense. The front seven, Elder, Bruner, and Renfro. An experienced lot. One of the best linebacking cores in the nation. Chad Brown, Ted Johnson, Greg Biegert, and Ron Wolfork. Rated number one by the Sporting News. And the defensive backs, Collier, Bradford, Greg Lindsay, and the sophomore, Chris Hudson. So a good start for the Rams. Right out of the chute. 11 yards and a first down from the CU 31. Ward again brought down quickly by number 99, Leonard Renfro, a preseason All-American candidate. CSU wants to try to establish the running game, and you'll see good penetration by Leonard Renfro. Primus with the crackback block on Ronnie Wolfork but Renfro with good penetration. Here's a guy that is ranked in the top four or five of his position in the country. Outstanding player. His freshman season, Bill McCartney felt he was the best defensive lineman CU had, and that was right out of high school. Penalty flags on the field. Penalty goes against CSU. So that'll bring him back five yards. It will be second and 17. Well, you just saw our lead official for the afternoon, the referee John Laurie from Springfield, Missouri. This is a big eight officiating crew. Second and 17. Some more flags twirling in the air. This one looks like it'll go against CSU also. Offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Not only is it tough to play in the first game of the season, but when you change quarterbacks, and Anthony Hill didn't play much last year, the cadence sometimes is much different as well. And you say, well, they've had all of two days to work on that. Yeah, they have, but it hasn't been in live situations against an opponent like Colorado. So both teams, I think, will need to settle down a bit, especially on the offensive side of the football. A couple of five-yard penalties has CSU back at its own 18. That brings up second and 22. Hill to throw. Has his man. It's Van Ward, the freshman redshirt out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. He's gotten the ball every time for CSU so far. And he gets it up to the 25-yard line. Call it a gain of seven. 
Well, CSU wants to run everything off play action. You'll see Van Ward, after he gets the fake, will slip through the line of scrimmage and then just head to the flat. A pretty good job of the outside linebacker. Ronnie Wolford picking up Van Ward as he ran out of bounds. That brings up third down and 15. Wolfork with a good chase. Hill gets it away. Overthrown the intended receiver, Greg Primus. And Hill was leveled at the end of that play by Wolfork. So CSU brings on the punting unit. Gianni Marcantonio will do those chores for the Rams. Brand new kicking crew for CSU. Mark Antonio has never punted on the collegiate level. And the Rams kickers have never attempted a field goal. Back to return, Chris Hudson. From his own 36. The ball is loose. Picked up by the Rams. And recovered by Sean Moran. A 39-yard punt dropped by Chris Hudson, and the Buffs turn the ball over. Well, Hudson fields it cleanly and then tries to squirt right in between. You can see the ball out of his hands before much contact. And CSU, last year, not doing a good job in the turnover margin as the first turnover of the year. Hudson catches the football cleanly. That ball looked like it was almost out before any kind of contact. And the Rams in good field position now a chance to score early at the CU 36 this is Van Ward down to the 31 call it a gain of five Ronnie Wolfort to tackle one thing CSU did in the offseason Earl Bruce of course trying to get his team much much bigger the Rams are bigger up front Donnelly Meyer Engel Cox Basso are guys that have gained weight both offensively and defensively CSU's been able to put some good pounds on their players. Got to have that if you're going to withstand the Division I schedule. Anthony Hill, Earl Bruce calls him the best quarterback he's ever coached. This is Van Ward again inside the 30. All but one play so far from CSU has been directed Van Ward's way. And again, this is the kind of football that Earl Bruce likes to see. He wants to keep his offense on the field. He wants to monopolize the clock, keep the CU offense off, gain some yards, and at worst, punt the football and let CU work the length of the field. The Rams with third and four. The CU 29-yard line. We're early in the first quarter. The screen pass. Again, Ward is the man, but he is thrown for a bit of a loss. Ted Johnson, second consecutive play, he's made the tackle. That'll bring up fourth down. And Earl Bruce on the sideline right now, conferring with the other coaches, see what he wants to do. They're going to go for it. As we said, nobody experienced to handle the field goal kicking chores. Plus, it would be one heck of a long field goal. So. The Rams with fourth and seven. Hill is hit quickly. Gets the pass off, but it's incomplete. And in on the blitz was the free safety, Chris Hudson, to make Hill get rid of it quickly. So the Buffs take over on downs. Their first possession, and we've got plenty to talk about with this new offense. Well, when you play inexperienced quarterbacks on either side, you gamble and you can at times take gambles that veteran quarterbacks might pick up. Chris Hudson got a running start from free safety and never was touched. Cordell Stewart, the sophomore out of Marrero, Louisiana, the starting quarterback for the Buffs, his first start on the college level. Here's the whole offense. Stewart, Lamont Warren, the lone running back, and a host of receivers, very good ones. The line, West Ivy Stoltenberg, shoot it's Eric Mitchell down the sideline on the pass reception inside the CSU 40. Greg Myers finally pushed him out. 
A lot of talk about the Buffs' new pro set offense, the passing offense. And with all the talk, you might think that they'd be throwing 99% of the time, but that's not true. They're just going to pass a little more than before. It'll be about a 50-50 split pass and run. Here's the Rams' defense. Lynch, Norton, Hodge, and Smith on the line. The linebackers are Ingram, Duker, and Brian Schneider, the local kids. Sylvester Mabry, Andre Strode, Vincent Booker, and Myers, who just made that tackle, are the secondary. The Buffs with their first running play of the season. Lamont Warren. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Brady Smith the tackle. Lamont Warren with off-season shoulder surgery. A lot of problems with that shoulder last year. He's got the full range of motion, but not 100% strength yet. Flags on the field. Just about everybody jumped on that play. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense, five-yard penalty. Yeah, we saw that happen in CSU's first possession as well, and Bill McCartney knows that with the new quarterback, the cadence is different, and you're going to see some guys jump. And you not only saw one or two, you saw half the offensive line move without the ball being snapped. Second and 18 for the Buffs. Water. Good rush on Stewart. He's going deep to Michael Westbrook. Touchdown, CU! Well, I tell you, this is a great job by Cordell Stewart. Watch him slide to his left, buy himself some more time. He threw that football almost falling directly down, and Westbrook from his seam were in the seam for the touchdown. That's a great throw by Cordell Stewart under blitz. At Blotto for the extra point. He's got it. And CU has a 7-0 lead, courtesy Cordell Stewart to Michael Westbrook for 48 yards. I am pretty handy with an iron. Uh-huh. And do you always iron around the price tag? <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Something's going on at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. It's a clearance sale. It's the end of the model year. Save big. And your dealer wants to make room for all the new models. Save really big. Get a Jeep Cherokee and save up to $29.75. Pull it on yourself. Or get up to $1,500 back on Eagle Talon. Hey, count it. Or get $500 cash back on Jeep Wrangler. Party. Not too many people. All of America. Know about this money, money, money event, so take your time. Hurry in now. This offer will run forever. And soon. Get the advantage at your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. One of your greatest pleasures might not be so wonderful if you couldn't hear it. In fact, you could fill Mile High Stadium almost four times with Coloradans who are deaf or hearing impaired. That's why News 4 is closed captioned seven days a week at 5 and 10 p.m. And that's why News 4 is proud to introduce Denver's only real-time sports closed captioning for all Broncos and CU games aired on Channel 4. At News 4, we hear you. Ding, News 4. Cordell Stewart will feel pressure coming from his right side. Watch the nice move he makes, simply sliding to his left right there, buys himself some time, and then the strong arm throwing, falling backwards and right on the money to Michael Westbrook. That's a play that you usually see from a senior. And sometimes as a quarterback, you don't get a chance to see the receiver scamper into the end zone. You have to hear it from the crowd. Mitch Berger to kick off for CU. And back to receive it for CSU, Billy Gonzalez and Van Ward. We've got 9.53 to go, first quarter. Line drive from Berger, still got to the end zone. Off the hands of Van Ward, and through the outside. So the Rams once again at their own 20. 
That last scoring drive from CU, they hit quickly. Just three plays, 71 yards. The pass from Stewart to Westbrook. Last year, Bill McCartney knew Michael Westbrook, a freshman, had big-time talent, but he didn't think it would show up so soon. Westbrook caught 22 passes last year, five of them for touchdowns. That's a pretty good ratio. Anthony Hill from San Diego, the quarterback, and he gives to the fullback John Ivlo. Flags down. Marcella Selda, the tackle. Illegal procedure. Offense. And CSU, once again, they want to stay on the field, monopolize the ball, but they, they've got to make sure they get themselves together in the huddle and figure out what the snap count is. You, can't, you just can't believe sometimes how fast everything moves in a regular season opener for college kids. It's loud. I mean, you're playing a great team on defense. You're anxious to get off the football, and sometimes you just jump. It'll be second and eight for CSU. And the snap is fumbled. The ball is loose. Black jerseys on it. Yes, CU recovers the fumble at the CSU 23-yard line. It was a bad exchange from center to quarterback. That ball laid behind the CU defensive front for a long time. I don't think Anthony Hill ever had complete possession of it. We talked about Earl Bruce not wanting to turn the football over at worst, lining up and punting, making CU work the length of the field. This is a way to really dig yourself a huge hole as Dennis Collier comes up with the fumble recovery. Watch the ball bounce behind the CU defensive front. It's actually on the field right there, and nobody sees it. Dennis Collier from the right side of the screen, number 22, he sees it, and able to get to it. Dennis Collier filling in for Dion Figures, starting at cornerback. Figures serving a one-game suspension. He'll be back next week when the Buffs play Baylor. So from the 23-yard line of CSU, Stewart complete to Westbrook. A nice little move, gets him inside the 15. Down to the 12. Kareem Ingram and Chris Duker there for the tackles. You see Cordell Stewart look to the sideline and then look to the wristband. Stewart having plays signaled in for him, at least formations, and then he can change at the line of scrimmage. A lot of this Colorado offense is audibleized at the line of scrimmage. New wide receivers coach Carl Durrell signaling in the plays. This is Lamont Warren. Down to the six. A gain of six. Vincent Booker, the tackle on Warren. The sophomore out of Inglewood, California. Last year led the Buffs in rushing, 830 yards. Here you see him looking at his wrist. Gets the formation. Now he's got the option of a couple of plays. Once he gets to the line of scrimmage, based on what CSU does defensively, he can change there as well. That's a lot to do for a young quarterback. Second and four. Warren again, inside the five. A gain of three, Brady Smith the tackle. Lamont Warren's gained about 10 pounds himself in the offseason after battling that shoulder injury. And he's going to be a much stronger runner inside. He was a slashing kind of tailback in his freshman season. As you see, he set a senior record for most rushing yards by a freshman at 830. Third and two from the CSU four-yard line. Intercepted by CSU in the end zone. That pass intended for Charles Johnson. It was deflected and picked off by Greg Myers. Oh, what a great job of playing the slant. Charles Johnson did not do a good job of shaking Sylvester Mabry. The ball knocked up in the end zone and intercepted by Greg Myers, who smartly downed it, gives his, chance a club, gives his club a chance to start at the 20-yard line. That's superior defense right there. 
Well, it's a good thing Greg Myers didn't get out of the end zone. A good thing for the bus because this kid is quick. He's got 4.39 speed in the 40. That's a great job by the corner, Mabry, of just getting inside that slant route and not a good route by Charles Johnson. So the CSU offense on the field, the Rams get it at the 20-yard line. And they come out with that old Ohio State offense, the three running backs. The robust offense, they call it. One of those backs in motion. And up the middle goes Ivalo, the fullback. If he can get to the sideline, he's got room. Down to the CU 30. A pickup of 50 yards for the fullback, John Ivalo. A senior out of Joliet, Illinois. He was a leading rusher last year for CSU. The quick trap. You can see an excellent job of CSU getting hats on hats. And John Ivalo, I think, surprised everybody with his speed. Had he been able to turn it up the sideline right there, he might have gained an additional 10 yards or so. Ivalo, formerly a linebacker at Northwestern before he transferred, he gets into the secondary before anybody realizes and that's pretty good speed by a guy who's 235 pounds. From the 30s, CSU, that's Leonis Brown, and he's stopped by Greg Beaker. A loss of two yards on the play. Leonis Brown, the fastest CSU player, 4-3 guy in the 40-yard dash. He likes to take everything outside. I think Earl Bruce would like to see him learn to run between the tackles a little more effectively. Leonis Brown has a brother you're very familiar with, doesn't he, David? Heisman Trophy winner Charles White, a former Cleveland Brown. Star at USC where he won the trophy. Second and 12. Hill to throw. Incomplete. Didn't look like Greg Primus was ready for it. Then again, Hill had to get rid of it a bit quickly. Chad Brown on the coverage there. Why they start him young in Boulder? A full house. Sold out. And just about every game this year is sold out so far, except for a couple. Third down and 13. Hill. Again, overthrows the intended receiver, Primus. And again, it was mainly because of a good rush by CU. I tell you, as Anthony Hill starts to gain maturity and confidence, he will hit that throw. That's excellent protection. The blitz picked up inside, and Hill just has to stand in the pocket and put a little air under that football, not try to gun it on a corner route, because Primus was there, and that's going to be inside the 15-yard line come with experience. He's certainly a good enough athlete to learn that. Anthony Hill offered a basketball scholarship at San Diego State University. Opted for football. He felt he was too small to ever make it to the NBA. He's listed at 5 feet 11. Fourth down for CSU. Again the rush. Ronnie Wolfork. And CU takes over on downs. And if you're going to pass protect, we'll take a look when we come back. You've got to get up the linebacker's face. And we will be right back. See you leads at 7 up. Another big holiday weekend. Romeo, what do you have planned? A little volleyball? Soundtrack. Barbecue? Big sale at Soundtrack. A little mountain biking? You mango sale at Soundtrack. Oh, yeah. On stereos, TVs, computers, camcorders, VCRs, all the big names. Maybe a little girl watching? Girls? Where? Hey. I work the soundtrack. Come on up and see my big screen TV. Soundtrack. Big names, little prices. Guaranteed. News 4 presents the Dan Reeves Show, an instructional series helping you, the viewer, experience better football through television. Monday on the Dan Reeves Show. Let's and Dan take a second look at the season opener against L.A. We'll try and stop the coach with a play from the past in distant replay. Plus, we'll have a special guest appearance by Monday night at 630 only on News 4. News 4 and the Dan Reeves Show, dedicated to better football through television. 
No question, you have better things to do with your time than waste it. So at the Colorado National Banks, if we take up too much of it, we'll make it up to you. If we goof up, we'll make good. And if we don't treat you right, we'll make sure you know we know. Because at Colorado National, giving great service isn't a fluke or a limited time offer. It's a 130-year tradition you can count on. Yes, you can. Below the top of your screen, he's assigned to block Ronnie Wolfork. What he does is he sets too deep in the pocket. You can see, and he allows Wolfork just a running start, and Wolfork able to throw him aside and sack Anthony Hill. You've got to get up into the face of linebackers. You can't set and wait for them, especially ones as good as Ronnie Wolfork. 6.43 to go, first quarter. The Buffs up seven tip. Lamont Warren the carry, and he loses a yard. Kareem Ingram throws him for the loss. Well, we've heard so much about that CU offense. They're calling it the offense of the 90s, but Earl Bruce has a retort for that. The offense of the 90s, they talk about, he says. It's been the offense of the 70s, as far as the WAC is concerned. The WAC, of course, a pass-happy conference and very effective at it. Second and 11 for the Buffs. Three wideouts lined up. Stewart will run. And he'll keep running. Almost to midfield, a fumble. Recovered by the Buffs. A very nice run by Cordell Stewart. Looked like a plan play, didn't it, Dave? Well, you're probably going to see a lot of this. Yes, this is the design quarterback draw, but Cordell Stewart, again, 205 pounds. Watch how many tackles he breaks. And give CSU credit. They have been extremely aggressive at trying to strip the football. Stewart laid that one down on the ground, and fortunately for CU, they were able to recover. But this guy is dangerous, not only when he throws the football, but when he tucks it down or pulls it down, tucks it away, and takes off. When he entered CU, we heard so much about how well he throws it. He's been just as impressive as a runner in his two years. Lamont Warren across midfield. Down to the CSU 49. Call it a gain of three. Brian Schneider, the tackle. Schneider from Pomona High School in Arvada. Talked about CSU and, and how they worked in the offseason. Kevin Lynch has added about 15 pounds. Norton is up about 20 pounds. I mean, when you put that kind of weight on in one offseason, you know you've been in the weight room a long time. And they felt like they needed to get bigger on the defensive front to hold up. And Earl Bruce says they're bigger, they're stronger, they're quicker. Second and seven, Lamont Warren, the first down and more. Down to the Rams, 31. Vincent Booker brings him down. A gain of 18 for Warren. He's so smooth when he runs, it doesn't look like he's really moving. But the gaping hole in Warren kind of slides into the secondary. Greg Meyer is doing a nice job of simply staying on his feet, grabbing Warren by the, the lower legs. This is a guy that's very deceptive in his gait, but he's got very good speed. First down for the Buffs. Good rush. Stewart escapes two, three, gets the first down inside the 15. He looked like Darian Hagan on that play. Yeah, about 30 pounds heavier and about five inches bigger. And Bill McCarty right there just looking around and shaking his head. I'll tell you what, we've talked about his strength and his mobility. Just take a look. There's one. Nice move there. There's two. Three, four, a good block. Cordell Stewart making people miss, and he's strong enough to run through arm tackles. There was great competition for the starting quarterback job between Cordell Stewart and Vance Joseph. Joseph with a shoulder problem. Stewart got the job, and he's showing why right now. Well, not exactly right now. Right there, he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. A sack for Brian Schneider. Well, that's a heck of a play because Schneider had him by the jersey and strong enough to pull him in and get him to the ground. Brian Schneider was a good football player from Mona High School, both offensively and defensively. And he, too, is getting the 
signals the calls from the sideline and making sure he gets his guys set up in the right position. It's a loss of nine yards on that play. So Stewart is facing second and long. Complete T.J. Cunningham knocked down at the 17 by Andre Strode. Let's go down to the sideline and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks a lot, Les. You might notice T.J. Cunningham, that redshirt freshman out of Aurora, he is wearing jersey number eight. Nobody has wore that jersey at CU since the 1988 season. I'm sure a lot of you Buff fans remember who used to wear that jersey. Number eight used to belong to Salinesi. And his first time back is this year, T.J. Cunningham now wearing number eight. Salon Essie, the late quarterback who led the Buffs in the late 80s. Third down. Stewart had a man wide open. It was the tight end, Sean Embry, but incomplete. Going to bring up fourth down, and Pat Blotto in to attempt the field goal. Last year, he only attempted a couple. Jim Harper was the primary field goal kicker. Lotto one for two last year. And this is a 31-yard attempt. The signal is no good. Wide to the right. So CSU gets the ball back. Still down 7 to nothing. We're going to take a break at Folsom Field. 2.40 to go. First quarter. Hey, want to taste a couple of beers? Sure. You bet. So which do you prefer? This one. That's a beer. Here's Budweiser. And this is Coors Extra Gold. Oh, whoa! What if I told you Coors Extra Gold was brewed far longer than Bud? I have no idea. 70% longer. I get their surprises all the time. Slow brewed for that real beer flavor and color, the way beer was meant to be, which may be why 58% of Bud drinkers prefer Coors Extra Gold. It'd be 90%. Coors Extra Gold. If you're missing real taste, beer is back. Incredible. These are awesome facts. The ultimate Ford sale at Big Mike Norton Ford. You'll save thousands during the biggest Ford sell-off ever held in Colorado. Forget retail, forget wholesale, but remember index pricing at Mike Naughton Ford. It lets me sell selected Ford inventory below cost. Over 400 Fords ordered sold, with interest as low as 2.9. Ford wants them sold, and that's just what I'll do. The ultimate 48-hour Ford sale till midnight Monday in Aurora at Big Mike Naughton Ford. News 4, setting the pace. I'm Amy Sporer, and if you missed News 4 this week, you missed the breaking of two exclusive reports. News 4 investigator Brian Moss first brought you the story of Congress Park homeowners, many outraged that a church wants to establish a homeless shelter in their neighborhood. And Moss broke the story of a 911 call taker fired by Denver police for allegedly hanging up on emergency callers. News 4, setting the pace. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC-TV, the National Broadcasting Company, and the CU Cheerleaders. Any reproduction or rebroadcast of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC-TV is prohibited. The Buffs with a 7-0 lead. The Rams with the ball after a missed CU field goal. Anthony Hill still at quarterback. Complete. Closest men to it were three black jerseys. See you, boys. Well, Anthony Hill trying to get the ball to Greg Primus. It's about time for Primus to be included in the game, but keep in mind that Colorado also defensively wants to take number 27 out of the Rams offense. When he is in the line of scrimmage, somebody plays him bump and run and also gets help in the deep secondary. Primus usually catches anything close to him, but Anthony Hill in four attempts so far has not really been close to Greg Primus. Up the middle for a couple of yards. That was the fullback, John Ivlo. And the tackler was Greg Beaker. Well, the Rams are not picked to do very well in the Western Athletic Conference this year. The media, for whatever they know, had the Rams picked to finish near the bottom. Earl Bruce says, no way, and he's willing to bet you on it. CU, on the other hand, 
along with Nebraska, depending on which poll you look at, picked to finish first in the Big Eight. The Buffs also ranked 12th in the country by Associated Press. On second and seven, Hill is hit for a gain of three yards. That'll bring out the punting unit for CSU. My mistake, that was a third down play. Gianni Marcantonio back to punt for the Rams. And once again, Chris Hudson to return. That snap bounces in. Marcantonio gets it off. Hudson a fair catch at his own 37. And that's where the Buffs will start with it. A minute 12 to go in the first quarter. Mark Antonio, a punt of 37 yards there. You can get the, an the analysis of today's game from the coach himself tomorrow night on the Bill McCartney Show. We'll bring you all the highlights of today's game as well as introduce you to a special CU student athlete. Join Dave Logan, the man sitting next to me, and Coach McCartney for the Bill McCartney Show Sunday nights at 1035, immediately following the News 4 Late Edition right here on News 4 the home of the CU Buffs. Although tomorrow night you won't be there, will you? No, it'll be Mark McIntosh. Mark will host it while Dave is with KOA doing the Broncos broadcast. Buffs with a running play, James Hill. And Steve Norton, the tackle. Yeah, I think now it's important for CSU, the offensive team, to get together on the sideline, the coaching staff, and figure out how they can move the ball a little more effectively. CU's defense, or CSU's defense, although they've given up the long touchdown throw, they've hung in there. They've come up with turnovers. They've kept CU out of the end zone except that one time. Cornell Stewart, four of six for 98 yards, one touchdown and one interception early in this game. Second and eight for CU. Three wide receivers. Good rush. Stewart gets rid of it quickly, but incomplete. The intended receiver is Westbrook. Brady Smith with the pressure on the quarterback. Rams are doing a good job of changing defensive fronts after Stewart gets underneath the center. And that time, Brady Smith got to Cordell Stewart just as he released the football. And that's one that Westbrook usually will make. CSU, again, changes defensive fronts. If you're Cordell Stewart, this is what you see. Bam! Brady Smith in his face. Brady Smith, very quick. Six foot five, 226 pounds. He's a freshman redshirt. Out of Barrington, Illinois. Earl Bruce going back to the Midwest. He knows so well to pluck some players. Third down. And the Buffs stop. They'll have to punt the ball. Stewart with the carry. Steve Norton the tackle. So we'll see Mitch Berger. For his first punt of the college season, Berger trying to become the fourth straight CU punter to earn All-American honors. Previous to him, Barry Helton, Keith English, and Tom Ruin. We are at the end of the first quarter, so the Buffs will have to wait to punt. They lead it 7 and up. What's it going to take to get you into check plus checking a commercial federal? Lots of convenient locations? Done. Overdraft protection? Done. Telephone bill paying and ATMs all over the place? Done. Done. You want more? How about no monthly fee with a $100 minimum balance, plus free purchase protection and free extended warranty coverage? And we're not done yet. We'll give you your first order of checks free and deposit $10 in your account. Whatever it takes, it's all right here. Check plus checking, only from Commercial Federal. Okay, she beat me. She out hustled me, she out fought. And now she got new shoes from Converse with the React juice. Ready moves this way, juice reacts that way. Makes her stop and cut quicker than us. I gotta come up with something fast. Who wants to get a game? Kevin, have you met my grandmama? Yo, Kevin, you all right, man? Kevin. Some people may not think I'm the world's greatest actor, but I am the Sarah Bernhardt of car movies. I know cars. And I know Quaker States. Nobody protects your engine better against wear, against sludge. Quaker State is one tough motor oil. What? <laughs> <laughs>
Today's game is brought to you by Europtics, by State Farm Insurance, and by Metro Brokers, all proud companies for Colorado. And also by Coors Drive and by Mile High Greyhound Park. Okay, they're stepping to their staff. Mike Perry, one of the Buffs' offensive line coaches, talking to his kids as CU gets ready to punt. Made a right, right call. Gonzalez to return for CSU. It's a nice one. Gonzalez from his own 16. Looking for room up the middle. Didn't find any. There's a flag on the field back where Berger punted the ball. A punt of 43 yards. Let's see what the call is. Well, it's either going to be roughing or running into the punter. Might have been blocked into the punter. We'll see. Had a five-yard penalty running into the kicker. Five-yard penalty. Even though he was blocked, it's running into the kicker. Five yards. You heard uh, John Loring say even though he is blocked, it's still running into the kicker. And you can see clearly that Scott Phillips hit Mac Kraft. And that resulted in Mitch Berger going down. Some stats for you. From the first quarter, first downs, the Buffs lead that category, 6-2. Yards rushing about even, yards passing. Well, the one big pass play, Cordell Stewart to Michael Westbrook. The big difference there. And the Buffs have about doubled CSU in yards gained so far today. And pro football, that would not have been a penalty because Kraft was blocked into the punter. That's not the case in college football, though. CSU starts with the ball at its own 21. We're just starting the second quarter. Leonis Brown. A nice pickup to the 31. Dennis Collier, the tackle. We talked about Brown's speed. He likes to bounce everything to the outside. And a pretty good job by the upfront people of CSU. You can see downfield giving this guy a chance to turn the corner. Leonis Brown is a dangerous guy when he has the football. Brings up second and two for CSU. Back at the line of scrimmage, no gain. Nobody expected Van Ward to be the opening starting running back for CSU but he was so impressive in fall ball he won the job it's not that Leonis Brown lost it it's that Van Ward won it like CSU jumped a little too quickly there. Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Five yards. Take a look. Greg Baker coming on the stunt. And it looked like Terry Engel anticipated Baker's arrival and bounced up a little too quickly. This defense with the kind of speed that you really look for. Colorado, an exceptionally quick and fast defense. And I think to attack this club, you're going to have to run right at them and not try to run around them, but cut off their pursuit angles and, and try to push them off the ball. Third and eight. Hill hit from behind once again. It's Ronnie Wolfork who led the team in sacks last year with 13. He's already got a couple this afternoon. And Greenier, the fullback, you'll see left side of your screen. He did what Ivlo did the last time. He catches Wolfork instead of attacking him. And Ronnie Wolfork is much too good an athlete to sit and catch when he comes in the pass rush. Gianni Marcantonio punting from his own goal line. Chris Hudson to receive it. A 
nice one from Mark Antonio. Back at the 40 is Chris Hudson across midfield. Penalty flags down as Hudson gets dropped at the CSU 45-yard line. A 45-yard punt by Mark Antonio. Dan, this is going to be a clip on Sam Rogers, number 90. Right in the old back. On the return, illegal block in the back, 10-yard penalty, first down. Right there, you can see Sam Rogers. You can't have those hands behind the shoulder pads. Now, Bill McCartney is arguing, hey, wait a minute. It might have been in front, but in this case, it wasn't. So a 15-yard return for Chris Hudson is wiped out by the 15-yard penalty. Got a change on the offensive line. Clint Moore in the ballgame now for the Buffs at left guard. This is James Hill. One yard. The tackle, Brian Schneider. Schneider everywhere today. James Hill, formerly the starting fullback and a guy that gave CU a, a truly quick player at that position. But now at tailback, it's a much different world, especially in the one-back offense. Got to make every decision just a little bit quicker. Second and nine for the Buffs. From their own 43. Hill again, and he's met head-on by, once again, Brian Schneider. A couple of yellow flags are on the field. Yeah, I think that's going to be a late hit. And really too bad because CSU had Hill stopped from Dead virtually ball. no game. Personal foul. Defense. Late hit. First down. You take a look. Hill is down there. And you can see Hood comes in. Oh, with the spear. Matt Rood. Defensive end. 6'4 and 209 pounds. You just can't make a mistake like that. You want to be aggressive. You want to certainly, if a guy's standing up, you want to go after him. But when he's on the ground, you can't lead with your helmet. Let's go down to the CSU sideline right now and a tidbit from our Jim Hanchett. Well, that CSU defensive coordinator, Chuck Heater, has been all over his players for not wrapping up on tackles. Concerned that Stewart and Warren are just slipping by in the last uh, exchange. He was yelling at them, don't give up, don't give up. Ironically right there, Matt Rude a little too aggressive. Schneider again, hits Stewart. The ball is loose, no whistle. CSU gets the fumble recovery. Tony Ulasic falls on the ball. Everybody waiting for a whistle. I think a few players thought the ball was called dead and Cordell Stewart sacked, but no, but it was a live fumble. I think it's a good call because I don't think Stewart's arm was actually moving forward. Schneider from the bottom of your screen will hit Stewart in the middle of the back. No, sir, that's a fumble. That ball was not coming forward, and CSU once again comes up with a turnover. And Brian Schneider comes in completely untouched from the weak side, the back side of your quarterback. Earl Bruce said one of the things that rankled him last year, the lack of turnovers recovered by CSU. He's already got two this afternoon. The Rams from the Buffs 37. That's Van Ward stays on his feet down to the 31. Van Ward on the option play. When you're out there, you just have to try to make somebody miss. Pretty good move and almost pulls himself away as CSU is going to take a timeout. CSU is going to take a timeout. We've got 10.53 to go second quarter. The Buffs lead it 7 and up. There's a dry chill blowing down from the Rockies. Coors Dry, double chilled for brewery fresh taste and a finish as clean as ice. Then delivered mountain cold to your store. It's not just a better dry, this is a better beer. Coors Dry, feel the chill. Sports is more than just who won or lost. It's about dreams, dreams like making it to the majors, Sun on your back. Shapiro hits one out. Hey, I had big dreams when I was a 
kid, and now they've come full circle. My kids dream of playing for the Rockies, and who knows, maybe it'll happen. And I'll be there to do the story. Now that would be a dream come true. Ms. Shapiro and the people of News 4. Well, there's a big sale at Soundtrack, where the prices are so low. Soundtrack won't play games with the biggest names, the ones that we all know. Like a Sony, a Mitsubishi, a Panasonic, a JDC. At Soundtrack, the prices are so low. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I love you people. Soundtrack. Big names, little prices. Guaranteed. Back at Folsom Field, we mentioned CSU's turnover problem from last year. For more on that, let's go to Jim Hanchett on the CSU sideline. Well, last, last year, the Rams had one of the worst turnover ratios in major college football. So this year, Coach Earl Bruce decided to bribe his players during practices. For every interception, for every fumble they recovered in practice, he handed out Jolly Rancher candies. And so far, the Rams this afternoon have earned three. Back up to you. Well, I tell you, the way they're going this year, they might just want to buy a big old bag of those things. So far, three turnovers have gone CSU's way. Second and five for the Rams. Good rush. Hill incomplete. The Jonas Brown, the intended receiver. Greg Beekert on the coverage. So far in the air. CU dominating this game. 98 yards to just seven for the Rams. In fairness, however, to Anthony Hill, he has been under much more pressure by the CU defense than Cordell Stewart. And he still has yet to really set his feet and I think gain his full composure. Third and five. The Buffs blitz again. Jeff Grenier runs the ball for the Rams. Leonard Renfro brings him down. gain on that play. That'll bring out the field goal unit for CSU. Peter Ranso, a senior from Rangeview High School in Aurora. And this will be a 43, a, excuse me, a 48-yard attempt. He has never tried a field goal on college level. And he is just short on that one. So the Rams, with their first opportunity to score, come up short, and the score remains seven to nothing with 10:04 to go, second quarter. The Buffs' offense, led by Cordell Stewart, back on the field, came to see you as an option quarterback. It's testimony to his athleticism that. He wins the job after Bill McCartney goes to a pro set passing offense. First and 10 for the Buffs from their own 31. This is James Hill. Gain of two. Kareem Ingram the tackle. See again a good job of the CSU defense and I think a tough transition for James Hill to make from a fullback in an option attack to a one back. Because at fullback, I mean, you get the ball, boom, you're hitting straight ahead, you're making one quick move, and you're into the secondary. Whereas as the, the tailback and one back offense, you get the ball seven yards deep, and you've got a lot of decisions to make. Second and eight for the bus. This pass complete, Eric Mitchell to the 40. He's just short of the first down, short by about a yard. Andre Stroh, the young man from Montbello High School, on the coverage, makes the tackle there. The score from Lincoln, Nebraska, the Cornhuskers in their season opener, leading Utah 21 0, second quarter. Nebraska ranked 11th in the nation by Associated Press. Right ahead of the bus. It's third and one for CU. Stewart with the lob. Charles Johnson and stays on his feet. 
He could go all the way. He does. Touchdown, Buffs. Third and one, how many times do you throw the football? And Andre Strode is in perfect position to make this play. But Charles Johnson gets a good spring, and he goes up and over Strode, and then watch the balance. Keeps his feet, and now he's into the middle of the field, and Charles Johnson and Michael Westbrook, two big play receivers this year for the Bucs. I'll tell you, that's a big-time play by a young guy. Lotto, the extra point, is good. And the Buffs looking very good right now with a 14 to nothing lead. We've got 8.32 to go, first half. Something's going on at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. It's a clearance sale. It's the end of the model year. Save big. And your dealer wants to make room for all the new models. Save really big. Get a Jeep Cherokee and save up to $29.75. Vote on yourself. Or get up to $1,500 back on Eagle Talent. Hey, count it. Or save up to $1,000 on Eagle Summit. Party. Not too many people all of America know about this money, money, money event, so take your time. Hurry in now. This offer will run forever. And soon. Get the advantage at your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Introducing a new breed of restaurant. Trackside Dining. Now at Mile High Greyhound Park. High Greyhound Park, now with a new look clubhouse, too. Cherry Creek and Greenwood Village. Third and one is a corner. You don't want to give up the quick play. So good cushion here by Andre Stroh. Watch the position. I mean, you could not play that any better. Charles Johnson got up in the air a little bit quicker. That's a superb athletic move by CJ and a pretty good job of getting back into the middle of the field and finally into the end zone. You can defense schemes and offensive alignments, but you cannot defense athletic ability. Scoring drive went three plays. That final play, the touchdown pass, 60 yards. And Dave, you and I were talking in the commercial break last year. It would have been the fullback up the middle on third and one. You bet. Now you never know when CU's going to go to the air. Right now, Mitch Berger goes to the air with another long kickoff. Van Ward does the smart thing. Puts his knee down in the end zone. For the third time this afternoon, after a kickoff, the Rams will start with the ball at their own 20. Invaluable when a man can do that on the kickoff. We learned that on the pro level this week when Dan Reeves picked up Brad Daloiso to kick off for the Broncos. David Treadwell relegated to strictly field goal and extra point duties. And of course, the Broncos open up tomorrow night at home against the Raiders. A bit of a busted play there, and the Rams get thrown for a one-yard loss. John Ivalo, the fullback, was the carrier. Jeff Bruner and Leonard Renfro, the tackle. Jeff Bruner, who's in that huddle, is taking over for the departed Joel Steed, the All-American nose tackle, drafted into the NFL. Bruner did a great job whenever he came in last year to back up Steed. And now he gets a shot in the starting lineup. Second and 11. Billy Gonzalez, they tried to run him on the reverse, but that didn't fool anybody, especially John Katasich, the CU linebacker in the ballgame now. By the speed, again, of the CU defense readily apparent here, Katasich coming inside and underneath never gets a hand laid on him, and he gets to Gonzalez before Billy can turn the corner. Tough to run wide on this team, and also really tough to really get a good push up front 
And right now, CSU is looking for anything offensively that they can hang their hat on a bit. Third and 15 for the Rams. Coming off a three and eight season. Hill complete for a first down. That was Greg Primus with his first reception in the afternoon. Dalton Simmons on the coverage. Here's a guy you've got to get involved in the offense, and you can see a nice job by Primus of selling that deep route. When he makes the turn, the ball is on its way. And a good throw by Anthony Hill. You can see Dalton Simmons laying off a bit of Greg Primus. He's someone that CSU must get involved in every contest. He averaged over six receptions a game last year. Altogether, 67 catches on the year. First and 10 for the Rams, their own 32. Hill will run it, but not very far. Back to the line of scrimmage. Leonard Renfro grabs his legs. Leonard Renfro, we talked about him in the Nebraska game. He was injured in the third quarter, about midway through. Prior to his leaving the game, Nebraska had carried the football 11 times for 19 yards. But he is the anchor on the defensive line. He's a guy that plays the run extremely well. And he's one guy they don't want to don't lose anybody, but he'd be one that they would hate to lose the most. Second and nine. Ivalo with another long one. This time, nobody in front of him. John Ivalo for CSU touchdown. talk about just what the doctor ordered the CSU they get up two long touchdown throws mentally a little bit out of it eye blow on the quick hitting trap is into the secondary he ducked his shoulder to hit somebody there was nobody there and John Ivalo has pretty good speed for a guy that size well, you can see although Chris Hudson with exceptional speed nobody is closing the gap on John Ivalo the extra point Ransaw's got it. And CSU with its first score cuts the CU lead to 14 to 7. There's a dry chill blowing down from the Rockies. It's Coors Dry, brewed with pure Rocky Mountain spring water. Double chill for brewery fresh taste and a finish as clean as ice. Then delivered mountain cold from the Rockies to your store. This is not just a better dry. This is a better beer. Coors Dry. Feel the chill. For years, you've depended on State Farm to insure your home. Daddy! But did you know you can also depend on us to provide financial security for those you love? State Farm. We sell life insurance. Be sure to contact your Denver Metro Area State Farm agent soon for a free family insurance checkup. Buff fans, it's finally here. A sports newspaper devoted exclusively to covering the Colorado Buffaloes. Picture after picture, page after page, the Buffalo Sports News is the nation's premier authority on CU athletics. Complete with game previews, player and coach interviews, features on former CU players, and the most extensive recruiting information available. Football, basketball, volleyball. We cover all the sports the Buffs play so well. Delivered weekly during the football season, you get a total of 25 action-packed issues each year for only $34.95. Call 1-800-GET-BUFF. We guarantee you'll love the Buffalo Sports News. Watch the two guards, Meyer on the left, Urasek on the right. Jeff Bruder, the nose guard, with a stunt. There's one trap, excellent block, and you can see Beaker gets blocked as well. And John Iblo is all by himself. CSU needed that. Five plays, 80 yards, 67 of which came on one run. Let me throw another set at you. John Iblo, we're in the middle of the second quarter. He's already got 119 yards rushing on the day. out a kick Michael Westbrook to receive it for the bus one yard deep in the end zone he's hit at the 17 
Vincent Booker brings Westbrook down. So the bus will start with it first and 10 at their own 17. Well, kickoff coverage is just a bunch of guys that want to. You can see, see Booker gets right up in Westbrook's eyes. Booker booked the. Six fifteen to go, second quarter. CU leading CSU fourteen to seven. The season opener for both squads. Fumbled snap. Lamont Warren of the Buffs, the running back, falls down on it. Fourth fumble of the afternoon for the Buffs. This time they recover it. The Buffs lose two, call it three yards on that play, so it's second and 13. This is Warren. Up to the 20. A gain of four. Robert Marceau, the junior out of Glendale, California, the tackle. Also there, Chris Duker. Cordell Stewart, the Louisiana Player of the Year a couple of years ago, a high school All-American. Now leading one of the top college programs in the nation. It's third and eight for CU. Stewart going deep. Westbrook had a couple of steps on the receiver, but the pass just wasn't there. Andre Strode on the coverage. A really pretty big defensive stand right there after CSU gets back in the game with that long run by Ivlo. Three downs and out for the CU offense. And good field position coming up for CSU. Mitch Berger to punt. And Billy Gonzalez to return. Berger averaged 40.8 yards a punt last year. He was the sixth in the nation. This one will bounce in CU's favor. And finally down at the CSU 31. So with 4.38 to go, second quarter, CSU will take over in its own territory. Hey, don't miss this week's Dan Reeves show, live from Mile High Stadium. Dan and I will take a look back at Sunday's game against the Broncos division rivals, the LA Raiders. We'll have another installment of Yo Dan. That's where a mystery guest asks, asks Dan Reeves the tough question. Broncos history buffs won't want to miss distant replay. That's a chance to step back in time. We'll take a look back at a great play in Broncos history. Plus, we'll have a live interview with one of the stars from Sunday's game. The Dan Reeves Show, Monday nights at 6.30. Wide open, Billy Gonzalez to the 41. That looks good for first down yardage. Dennis Collier the coverage along with Ted Johnson. Billy Gonzalez doesn't get a lot of notoriety because Greg Primus is on the other side. But a nice job again of selling the deep route and then coming back to the football. And Anthony Hill looks like he's a guy that's starting to find his rhythm a bit. Two good throws in the last couple of series. Gonzalez formerly of Thornton High School. Good all around athlete. That is, in fact, the first down for the Rams, their own 41. Another big hole up the middle. Jeff Grenier, and he is into CU territory. Greg Beekert, the tackle. Well, fullbacks, once they get into the secondary, they like to look up defensive backs, and you'll see Grenier all by himself. Now, watch what he does to Chris Hudson. Yuck. I mean, that is a forearm, and he runs right over the top of one of the better tacklers on the University of Colorado football team. Did you see the size of that hole? Did you seven, eight yards? Well, Chris Hudson's asking the size of the truck that ran over it. From the 44. The Rams, Leonis Brown down to the 41. That'll bring up second and seven. Ted Johnson the stop, the sophomore out of Carlsbad, California. The 
CU sideline. Everybody wondering, how do we stop the Rams fullback? <laughs> Deflected. <laughs> and ultimately caught by the intended receiver. That's David Frisch, the tight end, despite the deflection. The tight end the last couple of downs has really released the line of scrimmage cleanly. And although this ball is tipped, I think Ted Johnson may have got a hand on it initially, and maybe Ronnie Wolfork as well. Good concentration by the tight end. David Frisch, 260 pounds worth, makes a nice play. That'll bring up third and one. There's a timeout on the field right now. We'll keep it right here. 2.55 to go, second quarter. Buffs lead it 14 to 7. See Brian Cabral, the linebackers coach for CU. I, I think right now they've got to be a bit concerned with how CSU's been able to move the football a bit on the ground. A couple of big plays, and it looked like the Rams might very well find themselves out of this game, but to their credit, they have hung in there. Now trying to even it up right before halftime. Most of the teams in the Big 8 and the WAC are opening their season today, and as the afternoon wears on, we'll try and get you most or all of those scores. Bill McCartney, his history against the Rams, he is 5-1. and one. The lone loss coming in 1986. And Earl Bruce, he is 3-6 and six lifetime against CU. Only 0-1 at CSU, remember. Earl was also the head coach at Iowa State and Ohio State, and both those clubs played CU at one time also. Hill, that ball was thrown out of bounds and incomplete. So that will bring up fourth down. Dave, once again, on third and one, the other team going deep. Now. Well, I think Earl Bruce decided to go for this because he knows in fourth and one he's got a chance to run the play he wants to in terms of rushing the football. CU has blitzed a lot up the middle on third downs. It's tough to protect your quarterback in a play action rollout with inside pressure. Now he knows, hey, if we don't get that on third down, we'll come back and run the football with our best running play of the first half. How unusual is it to see Earl Bruce throwing deep on third and one? Well, I don't think unusual at all. As I just said, I think he's got fourth down here and he can go for it. You don't see him throw the ball in this down, I don't think. Anthony Hill fooled everybody, kept it himself. Picks up the first down, down to the CU 22. This play is a quarterback counter. And Anthony Hill, a play designed to fake fullback left, and then he'll step back and you see into a huge hole. And Hill, had he been able to break that tackle by Ronnie Bradford, might have scored. It's a play that CU ran quite well when Darian Hagan was playing quarterback. You fake the fullback to one side, you step back and take off the other direction. First down for CSU at the Buffs 22. They run the ball again. Jeff Grenier up the middle. Inside the 20. I'll tell you, anytime CSU has run the fullback trap, they have picked up positive yardage. Beekert make the tackle on Grenier that play. He picked up three yards. That'll bring up second and seven. Under two minutes to go. First half. CSU dominating on the ground. Good protection. And almost a phenomenal catch by Greg Primus. He's a great one, but even he couldn't come up with that one. Primus, top of your screen, just a simple crossing route, underneath the tight end, trying to scrape Bradford off of it. He hooked up almost, and Hill expected him to continue running. And you're right, Primus almost pulled that one in with his left hand. It's funny, as I watch that, in the pregame warm-ups, Primus caught one ball one-handed, it was such a nice catch, his teammates gave him an ovation. He almost came up with another one right there. CSU calls a timeout with 1.44 to go second quarter. 
The Rams deep in CU territory, down 14 to 7. Well, with the Broncos season beginning tomorrow, that can only mean News 4's Broncos beat begins tonight. Join host Gary Miller for a preview of the Broncos' first game against the L.A. Raiders. Gary will be joined by Broncos nose tackle Greg Cragen as they talk about how the Broncos can end that 0 for Art Shell losing streak, five in a row. Gary will also have the latest on the Broncos injury situation, plus an introduction to the Broncos' new kicker, Brad DeLuiso. It's Broncos beat tonight at 6.30, right here on News 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. Right now, third down with CSU calling the timeout. They, the, the, the most important thing for Earl Bruce is to find some way to protect the quarterback. Whether you move him out of the pocket, or you try to hit him with something short, Anthony Hill has not had great protection so far. And they line up in the roll bus, which they don't have to worry too much about protecting the quarterback. The robust offense is three running backs, but one of them splits wide now. Here they come. Hill gets rid of it. Nowhere near a receiver. Almost picked off by Ronnie Bradford. The closest man to it. A CU cornerback. That'll bring up fourth down. Let's see what the Rams will do. The field goal unit on the field. Peter Ransau, who missed one earlier this game from 48 yards. This one from 36. And he splits the uprights. CSU puts another three points on the board. So that CU lead now 14 to 10 with a minute 34 to go first half. Peter Ransau from Rangeview High School. Strong-legged young man. Played soccer in high school as well as football and lacrosse. I think some, sometimes when you're a 25-point favorite and you jump ahead quickly, you start to believe what others write and say about the game. And CU has found that CSU is not going to be a club that in this game will roll over and say, Gee, you're the much better team. CSU is going to make this a horse race, and it looks like it's going to be a terrific game in the second half. Historically, Bill McCartney has had a tough time getting his troops off to a quick start. Rand saw to kick off. Michael Westbrook right there to receive. puts this one two yards deep in the Buffs end zone. Once again, Westbrook wants to run it out. This time a little more success up to the 25. The tackle by Jeremy Burkett. Burkett, a freshman redshirt out of Lakewood, Green Mountain High School. So Westbrook and the CU offense will start with the ball at their own 25. A minute 28 to go, first half. Westbrook's a big, strong guy. You can see able to take punishment inside and keep on running. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Stewart, the quick out is complete. And must get four yards out of that play. The receiver was Lamont Warren. The running back lining up with wide receiver. And he's going to stay out there. The Buffs go into their two-minute offense. What's up? No huddle. Yeah, this is me. We're here at CU game. They're going to win it. They're going to win this one. They got it. Going deep to Warren this time. But overthrown. Sylvester Mabry, the only returning starter at defensive back for CSU on the coverage that play. May Mabry with a very good job of playing defense. You can see, although the fans wanted a penalty there, that's not even close. That's an excellent job of playing corner by Mabry. The 
Third and six for the bus. Under one minute. Almost intercepted. That ball was deflected by a CU receiver, and Sylvester Mabry almost had it. And the Buffs are going to have to punt with 56 seconds to go first half. Berger will kick it. Billy Gonzalez will receive it. So far, Berger averaging 46 yards a kick today. Gets a hold of that one. Gonzalez at his own 25. And brought down at the 33 by Scott Phillips. A punt of 46 yards, a return of eight. <laughs> we saw that last series, Cordell Stewart, not quite as sharp as he had been earlier in the game. And I think CSU's done a nice job defensively of showing different fronts and different coverages before the ball has been snapped, then bouncing into something that attempts to confuse the quarterback. You gotta keep this offense off balance, and especially with a young quarterback, you wanna make as many changes as you can before the ball is snapped. 44 seconds to go. The Rams at their own 33. First down. Hill keeps across the 35 to the 38. A gain of five. Ronnie Wolfork the tackle. Wolfork having a fine afternoon already with a couple of sacks. The clock ticking. Less than 25 seconds to go first half. And the Rams are content to let it tick down. Under 10 seconds. And the two teams will charge off into the locker room. CU jump to a 14 to nothing lead. The Rams with the last 10 points all here in the second quarter. And that's your score at halftime. CU 14. The visiting CSU Rams 10. We're at halftime in Boulder, Colorado, on the opening weekend of college football. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mark McIntosh with head coach Bill McCartan. Thank you very much, Les. We are live. We were live. And there goes Bill McCartney. Obviously not real happy with the way his ball comes playing right now. Started off quickly, but they're not playing with very much emotion. The thing he did not want to have happen is to have CSU in this ball game, get the momentum going, and that's exactly what we got right now at halftime. We'll try to get him when they come back out. Back up to you guys. All right, Mark, we'll have to have a talk with Coach Mack after this ball game. We're going to take a break from Folsom Field. We'll be right back. Introducing the Great American Cheeseburger with an Italian accent. It's Wendy's new 99-cent Junior Mozzarella Cheeseburger. It's a thick slice of rich mozzarella melted on top of Wendy's fresh beef. And to make it even more delicious, we created a zesty Italian herb sauce. Wendy's 99-cent Junior Mozzarella Cheeseburger. A delicious new addition to Wendy's 99-cent Super Value Menu. Okay, Dave, you're on. It's Amore. We've heard it all before. You want me to rub this piece of paper on something to make it smoother? There are always skeptics. So I'm going to take this piece of cellophane with the sticky stuff on the back and use it to fix things. So when we introduce products like our new stroke snap-off paintbrushes, we've come to expect a little skepticism. You mean to tell me these things paint as well as expensive brushes? New stroke snap-off paintbrushes from 3M. You'll get a good quality paint job. Trust us. Samsonite's Adventure Series luggage is perfect for those active vacations. It's sporty, easy to carry, and like every Samsonite, quite durable. The Adventure Series, for all you can pack into a vacation. 
It's back. Labor Day weekend at the Toyota Warehouse. The race to say it's simply the biggest Labor Day weekend sale in warehouse history. There's a price for everyone. New Tercels from $59.88. New 4x2 trucks from $69.88. Save $6,000 on a new Toyota this weekend. A multi-million dollar used a new vehicle inventory has been assembled. And every car and truck has been drastically reduced. Don't miss the race to save. Going on now with Douglas Toyota. The Toyota Warehouse. Take 104th Avenue west of I-25 in Thornton. The Dan Reeves Show, Monday night at 6.30, only on News 4. Back in Boulder, halftime. The season opener for CSU and CU. The Buffs lead it 14 to 10. You know, Dave, the odds makers said CU would be a 25-point favorite coming in, but we knew better than that, didn't we? Well, CSU always plays Colorado tough, and I think if you look back historically in the last, at least the last decade, when these two teams get together, it doesn't matter who's better, who has the better talent, uh, it's usually a close game, and I'm sure that's what Earl Bruce was telling his players. Hey, forget about what you read and hear. We can stay in this game. We can give our ch ourselves a chance to win if we're close in the fourth quarter. And Bill McCartney feared exactly what has happened. And Mark McIntosh mentioned it at the end of halftime. He feared CSU staying close and then having a chance to win in the fourth quarter. How about uh, grading out that CU offense, the new pro passing offense? Well, I don't think you're going to be able to grade the offense until we played or they've played three or four games. Uh, in the first half, they made some big plays. They also gave up the football a couple of times. And you can't turn the football over and be successful, especially playing at that level. So uh, we'll grade them after, let's say, the Minnesota or the Iowa game. But it's safe to say CSU and CU both have had their moments here in the first half. And CSU, we had mentioned Earl Bruce, wants a quicker and stronger team. Looks like he has it. Well, they've held up, and they pretty much stopped the CU running game, which that was the goal coming in to force Cordell Stewart to throw the ball a lot. And so Earl Bruce has to be tickled. And I would bet it's an emotional CSU locker room. Well, it's emotional on the field right now. The CU Marching Band, its first performance of the year for the home crowd. We're going to take another break. It's halftime at Folsom Field. Do you hunger for dirt and rocks? Do you salivate at the mere sight of a steep mountain trail? Are you getting enough roughage? 1992 Toyota 4x4 SR5 V6. For those who crave adventure, it's the ultimate feast. Bon appetit. All I really wanted was a chance when I first came to work for Channel 4 as a reporter. It was 35 years ago. Hard to believe. Back then, the news film was just that. It was film, like this interview that I did with Hubert Humphrey. And we only had 12 people in our news department. Today we have more than 100 for one of the most honored news organizations in America. It's been great watching our station and our city grow together. And I mean it every night when I say it is nice to have you with us on News 4. News 4, setting the pace. I'm Amy Sporer, and if you missed News 4 this week, you missed the breaking of two exclusive reports. News 4 investigator Brian Moss first brought you the story of Congress Park homeowners, many outraged that a church wants to establish a homeless shelter in their neighborhood. And Moss broke the story of a 911 call taker fired by Denver police for allegedly hanging up on emergency callers. News 4, setting the pace. The following political advertisement contains scenes which may be disturbing to children. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm Matt Noah, and I'm running for United States Senate in Colorado. This commercial is not suitable for small children, because abortion is so evil, it is not suitable for America. First half, we heard from our sideline reporters, Mark McIntosh and Jim Hanchett, and right now the two of them are in the stand. Let's start with Mark McIntosh. Thanks a lot, Les. Still trying to get over the disappointment of being stiffed by Bill McCartney, but we've wandered up into the CU stands. It's kind of interesting. We have Tony Cardenas here, and you see he's got a CU shirt on. He's obviously a CU fan. Well, when you know it, he's a CSU graduate. Now, Tony, got to ask you. First half, 14-10, the Buffs are struggling. What do you think? Uh, they're struggling a little bit, but uh, I think uh, they'll get going the second half. I, uh, 
uh, cheer for CU this game, but uh, uh, the rest of the games will cheer for CSU. <laughs> I would call you a Benedict Arnold, but I won't. Uh, Hi, the passing game, people coming in thought they would struggle, and that's exactly what they've done. Uh, pretty much so, but uh, I think it'll get going in the second half. I tell you, the one thing that surprised me, though, you know, the defense came in as one of the nation's best, but the fullback trap for CSU has been killing CU. Uh, yes, but I think that'll change in the second half. <laughs> Now, how long have you been going to CU games? Oh, uh, I take in about two every season. Now, your son, I understand, he's going to CSU or CU? No, my son graduated. My son and my daughter-in-law graduated from CU, but uh, the rest of the, and I'm cheering for CU, but the rest of the time, I, uh, I cheer for CSU. All right, Tony, thanks a lot, buddy. Enjoy the second half. Thank you very much. All right, one of the CU fans over here, sometimes a CSU fan. Speaking of CSU, let's go over to their sidelines and Jim Hanson. Jim? Oh, Mac, I'm uh, down on the uh, field with uh, Cam the Ram. We hear a lot about Ralphie the Buffalo. Uh, with me, uh, the Cam the Ram coordinator. Tell me a little bit about Cam. Um, this is a brand new one this year. We just got him this summer, and uh, he's a yearling. We estimate him about 180 pounds. And uh, we just, this is his first time on the field today, and uh, he did okay. He's pretty wild, but. And you're telling me this is pretty wild. Yeah, he, uh, we've been working with him the past few days. It's the best chance we've gotten out there, and. Uh, we're going to work with him a little more this week. He, he likes to get up on his hind legs and, you know, just do stuff like that and hold around. And, uh, but it's not like leading Ralphie on this field. Well, well he's better. Yeah. <laughs> and tell me uh, tell me a little about the history of Cam the Ram. Where, what's that come from? Um, well, basically, Cam stands for Colorado Agriculture Mascot, and he's uh, num is number nine in the line. And uh, we ran the other one for three years, and we'll have him for a while. And uh, we've been running from since about 56 when we started, you know, when we became the Rams, so. All right, thank you very much. So that's Cam the Ram, Les. And remember, Cam right now, very excited. Back up to you. <laughs> he looks very excited, Jim. Thanks. And there's Ralphie the third. We're going to take a break. Halftime at Folsom Field. Game after game, gunning down the defense with deadly aim. Who gets you rocking every time they score? Who plays the Broncos? New score. We play the Broncos. We play the Broncos. Here on Visit Leather Center during our Labor Day sale, and you'll discover more than handmade craftsmanship in everything we make. You'll also find 50% off comparative prices, because for a limited time, America's largest manufacturer retailer of leather furniture has cut every sofa, sectional, recliner, and chair in half. You'll never get more out of a piece of furniture. Leather Center. When you design it, build it, and sell it yourself, you can sell it for less. Looks great. But come on, I mean, you know, you could have gotten yourself another BMW or a Lexus. I suppose. But why? This had everything I wanted. Power, great handling, ABS. Yeah, but... Airbag, so leather, everything. I couldn't see spending 10, 20,000 more for what? Who makes it? Pontiac. It's the new Bonneville. Nice. See your Colorado Pontiac dealer. Well, there's a big sale at Soundtrack, where the prices are so low. Soundtrack won't play games with the biggest names, the ones that we all know. Like a Sony, a Mitsubishi, a Panasonic, a JDC. At Soundtrack, the prices are so low. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I love you people. Soundtrack. Big names, little prices. Guaranteed. There's your score at halftime in Boulder, CU 14, CSU 10. Now, we all know that the University of Colorado excels in football, but did you know that CU is also one of the top research institutions in the country? CU's Dirk Martin has the story. If universities and colleges fought for national titles in research like their football teams do on the gridiron, then the University of Colorado would consistently battle for number one. Last year alone, the CU Boulder faculty generated more than $100 million in research and grants. CU researchers and students have sent projects to Venus, Mars, and beyond, have helped assess human damage to the ozone layer, 
and alerted the nation to heightened academic pressure on kindergarten children. These are just a few of the reasons why one study has the University of Colorado ranked at the top of the class in research productivity. $100 million. Yes, that is an awful lot of money. And it definitely helps to make CU one of the top research universities in the country. But it's more than just prestige. Here at CU, those research dollars are translated into educational sense. Well, a research university has... As one Chuck Middleton is the Dean of Arts and Sciences at CU Boulder. Middleton says having top researchers teach classes creates an exciting environment for learning. What you need to do is find the people who not only are excited by teaching students, but are excited about their own work, and the synergy between those two things actually creates for the highest quality education. Professor Igor Gamov is one researcher who understands the synergy between research and technology. Gamov teaches a class called Creative Technology. It's a hybrid class combining liberal arts and hard science. To solve human problems. Although a chemical engineer, Gamow's passion for human performance has rechanneled his creative energy from designing new chemicals to designing products to help athletes. His Gamow bag has saved lives by helping people overcome high altitude sickness. How you doing in there, Jeff? And now, several projects later, he's using technology to help people swim farther and run faster. And this toe now stores the energy. They are projects which Gamoff gladly shares with students, the kind of students who passionately tackle the challenge of creative technology. Working with someone and having contact is the key. Um, I started working with Igor, like I said, um, when I was a senior in high school, and it's made all the difference in the world. But I try, as you know, is to take the students who are interested in certain things, and a lot of the students are interested in sports, and if they're interested in windsurfing, Oh, what about designing a new windsurfing board? Well, in order to do it, you have to know something about fluid dynamics. They don't mind the fluid dynamics because they know what they're doing. They said, gee, I've got to learn this if I want to understand that. Yeah, see, it's not just research, and he gets these undergrads understanding how to take the technology and what they're learning in class and put it into the application so you've got the both working together where you can benefit and you can use it. And that's what excites me. Excitement. Gamow says it's the key to unlocking knowledge, and knowledge is the key to keeping the University of Colorado at the top of the class. Um, we'll return with more halftime activities from Folsom Field after these messages and a word from the University of Colorado. Our dogs give you a good run for your money. Our dogs always fetch the paper, too. Mile High Greyhound Park, live racing at 62nd in Colorado. Timber Sky 4, Jet A, Stapleton, South, Departure, and below 6 for landing, Jumco Stadium. It's Skylights 4, a bird's eye view of all the best in prep football. Every Friday, touchdown with News 4's Marsha Neville, the only full-time high school sports reporter in a streak across the front range gridiron. From the Tigers to the Trojans, the Cougars to the Bruins, watch Skylights 4, Friday nights at 10 on News 4, your home team for high school sports. Marsha, nice job. Where to next? I'm Jim Schmidt, owner of an Apple Auto Parts store in the Wild Brask area, where we guarantee quality product, service, and value. Get Napa Quality Motor Oil, everyday low price to just 99 cents a quarter. Change coolant before the weather does. Napa Antifreeze is only $3.99 a gallon. Get sure starts with a Napa 60-month power battery, just $39.95 with exchange. Get quality products backed by a national warranty at over 300 locations in the Rocky Mountain region. Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. Some people may not think I'm the world's greatest actor, but I am the Sarah Bernhardt of car movies. I know cars, and I know Quaker States. Nobody protects your engine better. Against wear, against sludge, Quaker State is one tough motor oil. What? <laughs> Today's game is brought to you by First Federal Bank, by Samsonite, and by Soundtrack. All proud companies for Colorado. And also by Taco Bell. Real world experience. The real world. 
Diana Romero, an undergraduate who's working on it at the University of Colorado. Where do we get started? Diana works with local leaders in Denver's Five Points neighborhood. Grassroots, real world, the University of Colorado. We want our students to go out with knowledge that allows them to make a difference in the world. Time at CU. Let's go right down to the field. Jim Hanchett with head coach Earl Bruce of CSU. Coach Bruce, what do you have to find at the half? Oh, just make our plays, play hard, and get back into the ball game. We, we've given a couple away, but we're playing okay. We, we just see what happens. We've got to make our plays and not make any mistakes. Fullback trap, the offense of the 90s? Yeah, really. Thanks, coach. Back up to you, left. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Hey, it's worked for so many years. Why not stick with it? Earl Bruce in his fourth year at CSU. There's a look at CU's mascot again, or Alfie. And let's take a look at some highlights from that first half. CU leading it 14 to 10. Amazingly, against two pretty good defensive units, there have been some big plays. Cordell Stewart, nice job here, throwing off the back foot. Look how much he gets on the throw. Westbrook settles under the football. That was the first score of the game. And Cordell Stewart and Michael Westbrook will be a tandem that I'm sure will hook up a lot this season. A great catch by Charles Johnson. Good coverage, the alley-oop. And Johnson up and over. And then watch what he does with the football after the catch. You need big play receivers that have the capability of turning short throws into long gains. And see you at that point ahead, 14 to nothing. And I think some thought it was going to be over quickly. Except ZSU. And John Iblow on the fullback trap is into the secondary and Talk about the CU speed. Ivlo's got pretty good speed in his own right. 14 to 7 CSU, and at that point of the game, I thought it was critical for the Rams to score, and they certainly did. Here are your first half stats. Things starting to even out. CSU leads in the rushing department by a wide margin, but the Buffs lead in the passing department. I'll tell you what, 172 yards rushing in the first half. Bill McCartney has got to be pulling his hair out with that step. And here comes Ralphie one more time. Those guys see him turning back. They're asking her to run this way. You need to ask yeah, when you're dealing with a 1,200-pound beast. They, they take her only if she wants to go. Full house at Folsom Field. Second straight year, they've sold out the opener. Over the last three years, CU, the third winningest program in college football behind only Miami and Fresno State. Buffs haven't lost a conference game in three years, and the fans are responding. The sellout today, almost 52,000 strong. The only home games not sold out yet are Oklahoma State and Iowa State. CSU will kick off to start the second half. That's Peter Ransau teeing it up. And to receive it for the Buffs, Michael Westbrook. And I think it's going to be interesting, Les, to see what kind of emotion both teams come out of the locker room with. CSU clearly had the edge in that category the first part of the game. We'll see what happens here in the second half. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you. The start of the second half. Penalty flag because Ransaw kicked that ball out of bounds before it reached the end zone. Place the ball at the 35-yard line. Buffs had an option. They could have made CSU re-kick from five yards further back or take the ball at the 35. They chose the 35. Not a bad place to start with it. You can see Earl Bruce not real happy with his kicker. <laughs> kick it straight. Kick it into the end zone. That's crucial because you start any team out at the 35 their chances of scoring are about 30% better than starting out at the 20. Cordo 
Darrell Stewart, the sophomore from Marrero, Louisiana, at quarterback for the Buffs, to T.J. Cunningham. Close to the first down, looks like he might have been a yard short. That'll bring up second and one, Sylvester Mabry, the coverage. You can see the cushion, Mabry giving Cunningham, who has great speed, and in an offense, especially again with the new quarterback, you want to give him as many easy throws as you can. Give him things that will gain his confidence. That time, just about an eight-yard hook pattern. Nice, easy throw, and you're in business on second down. Lamont Warren across midfield, down to the CSU 47. Greg Myers the tackle. Lamont Warren stops and starts about as quick as any back in college that I've seen recently. You can see tremendous feet, keeps his balance, gets into the secondary. You gotta have that at the one back. If you're the featured back, you must have tremendous cutback ability. Good feet, and he does. Barry Sanders type move there, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> that guy's in a league of his own, but pretty good move by Lamont Warren. First down for the Buffs in CSU territory. Cordell Stewart. Dragged down from behind by Brian Schneider. So we talked about the CSU defense. Last year, they were 91st in the country in overall defense and 100th in scoring defense. And that's something that Earl Bruce has worked on, aside from making these kids bigger and stronger. You've got to be more, not only competitive, but have more confidence in your ability. Brian Schneider's a guy that played well last year for CSU. He came very close to getting his third sack on the afternoon right there, but Cordell Stewart got it back to the line of scrimmage. This is Warren again. Oh, excuse me. Stewart faked me out. The pass is complete to Garrett Ford. He's short of the first down. Down to the CSU 40. Brian Schneider again the tackle. Well, that was a nice fake by Cordell Stewart. Had me calling the wrong man. That brings up third and three for the bus. This time Stewart throws to Cunningham. Incomplete. Make that Westbrook. And they say he did catch the ball. One official came in saying no, and he was overruled. It's fourth and inches for the Buffs at the CSU 38. He could sneak for the first down. Nobody over the center. And Cordell Stewart once again optioning. Cordell Stewart telling his man to go deep. He's got him. It's Westbrook inside the five. A penalty flag on the field close to the line of scrimmage. A 34-yard pass play. Holding defense. Penalty will be declined. First down. We've talked about Cordell Stewart's athletic ability. This on fourth down and one, and you'll see when he takes the snap from the right side of the screen, a free shot. I mean, he is completely unblocked. Stewart able to step out away from the initial defender. It's a great throw on fourth and one. Vincent Booker looked like he had a good shot to sack Stewart, but just that one little subtle move. Gets him outside, he makes a good throw. First and goal for the Buffs from their own, from the CSU three-yard line. Corner route. Intended receiver was Charles Johnson. Andre Strode the coverage. And CJ is hurt. You'll see top of the screen, great coverage again by Strode. Johnson tries to go up and over and Stroh gets that right hand and you can see he twisted that left 
tough to see as a left ankle. Might have been the right ankle, but the foot was twisted when he came down. Sometimes when you have body contact up in the air, you come down a bit off balance. And it is his left ankle. Well, while the training staff looks over CJ, we'll take a break. There's your score. Another big holiday weekend. Romeo, what do you have planned? A little volleyball? Soundtrack. Barbecue? Big sale at Soundtrack. A little mountain biking? Humongo sale at Soundtrack. Oh, yeah. On stereos, TVs, computers, camcorders, VCRs, all the big names. Maybe a little girl watching? Girls? Where? Hey, I work for Soundtrack. Come on up and see my big screen TV. Soundtrack. Big names. Little prices. Guaranteed. His picture was never on anyone's dresser. When he lost his first tooth, there was no one to put a quarter under the pillow. But then something remarkable happened. A Denver journalist, using the power of television, found Jonathan a home. In fact, News 4's Bill Stewart has helped find homes for over 100 kids. Through the years, Bill has not only brought you the news, he's brought a smile to some very special children. Guys in pads aren't the only good athletes on the field. CU 14 to 10, deep in CSU territory at the three yard line. Lamont Warren, no gain. It'll bring up third and goal for the Buffs. Vincent Booker, the tackle on Warren. Eleven thirty-five to go, third quarter. Corner out again. Westbrook, but overthrown. Pretty good job by CSU keeping the Buffaloes out of the end zone and Stewart didn't have anywhere to throw that football. Andre Strode was step for step with Michael Westbrook. Pat Blotto will come on for the field goal attempt. This will be a 20 yard kick. CSU is calling a timeout right now. with a 14 to 10 lead trying to up it to seven well next week it's a Texas style shootout the buffs take their new offense on the road to Waco Texas for a game against Baylor as always Dave and I'll be there we'll bring you all the action from the Lone Star State when CU meets Baylor next Saturday at 11 a.m. only on News 4 the home of the CU Buffs. Blotto 0 for 1 in the field goal department today. A 20 yard attempt. Tobin the holder. Blotto has it. So the Buffs go up 17 to 10 with 11-12 to go, third quarter. CSU still well within striking range, down by just seven. There's the reaction from Pat Blotto. He put it through. As we told you earlier, CSU celebrating its 100th year of football. It's only appropriate they do it against their interstate rival. Well, 
Well, here's something you might not have known about the CU Buffaloes. All 11 games this year will be played on artificial turf. Of course, every game in the Big Eight is played on turf. opponents the Buffs will play at Baylor and at Minnesota both turf fields the Buffs to kick off Mitch Berger Billy Gonzalez to receive it for the Rams no chance that one almost went through the goalpost before it went out the back of the end zone so the Rams will start with it at their own 20. Mitch Berger doing the job on kickoffs today. The Rams haven't been able to return one. Anthony Hill, the CSU quarterback, the sophomore out of San Diego. Unlike most recent CSU quarterbacks, Kelly Stauffer, Kevin Verdugo, Terry Nugent, they were all dropback passers. Anthony Hill, a quick one with a good arm, can run the option. The Rams have been doing a little of that this afternoon. back. A loss of one. Greg Beaker is the one who popped him out of Longmont High School. Here's a look at Greg, a preseason All-American pick. He should be a Dick Butkus candidate, the Butkus Award, given to the nation's outstanding linebacker every year. Well, when you give up 172 yards rushing, however, in the first half, and you're supposed to be a great defense, Changes, but what you have to do is turn up the intensity a notch or two. We'll see if Colorado can adjust to the running game that CSU has presented them in the first half. I want to ask you a question about that in a second. Second and 11. Van Ward crawls his way up to the 23. You know, CU now, the defense in practice is looking at the passing game so much. Do they lose their edge trying to stop the running game? I think they lose a little bit of their edge as opposed to trying to line up and play a wishbone attack or even an option team. But I think you have to give credit to CSU for not only the game plan, but the way the offensive line has handled CU up front. Meyer and Engel. Engel is not playing. Excuse me. Cox, Urasek, Donnelly. They've, uh, they've really been able to run block effectively. Third and long for CSU. They try it up the middle again. This is Grenier, and he gets it to the 26. Well short of the first down, and the Rams will have to punt. Greg Beaker, once again, the stop for the Buffs. time the Rams tried to run it up the gut and the Buffs making some adjustments stop them. Chris Hudson to return the punt for CU. Mark Antonio will do the punting. High kick. Hudson from his own 36 hit quickly. Made the mistake of staying on his feet instead of going down and he took a five yard loss on the return. A 39 yard punt for Mark Antonio. Bill McCartney trying to spur on that offense. His team up 17 to 10. We've got 9 0 1 to go, third quarter. News 4 is proud to expand its closed caption programming to include real time captioning of all News 4 produced CU Buffs football games. This is, of course, in addition to the real time captioning of News 4 at 5 and the News 4 Late Edition at 10. First and 10 for the Buffs, their own 30 run. Complete to Westbrook. And he gets five yards on the play. Mac Kraft, the coverage, and the tackle. For his first start of his career, I have been really impressed with Cordell Stewart. The athletic ability has always been there, but his poise in the pocket and his delivery of the football. Quick release, strong arm. Bill McCarty told me this week that they have really burdened this young guy with a lot. He makes changes at the line of scrimmage. He's got to get them in the right place. So far, I think Stewart has certainly better than a passing mark. Second and five. Well, that pass was right on the mark. 
down to the CSU 43. Charles Johnson evidently recovered from that little pop he took last few minutes. You can see he escapes the bump. Now watch the concentration. Greg Myers right there almost gets to the receiver in time. That's a, a throw that is on the string. I mean, that's a throw that if it gets to you just at the right time, you get a chance to catch it and, and protect yourself. If not, you're going to get hit and hit hard. Charles Johnson came off limping a couple of minutes ago. This is Lamont Warren inside the 25, down to the 21 of CSU. 22 yards on that run. We've talked about Warren's ability to slide and to make people miss. Right there, he keeps his feet. Now watch him as he gets into the secondary. See all the moves. They freeze defensive backs, and yet Warren able to continue to move forward. Greg Myers, a pretty good tackle there. Otherwise, that's a touchdown. And Warren's put on about 15 pounds in the offseason. Strength and size. The Buffs down to the CSU 22-yard line. We've got eight minutes to go, third quarter. Buffs with a seven-point lead. They came in 25-point favorites. Cordell Stewart's numbers for the afternoon, 247 yards throwing already. Two touchdowns. Warren again inside the 20. Ryan Schneider having a real fine afternoon to tackle along with Chris Duker. Lamont Warren averaged 92 yards a game last year. He made second team all big eight. The well, CU's offensive line is so big that they can just get in the way sometimes, get a good push. Lamont Warren will be able to cut back to the soft spot. Second down, this is Warren. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Lamont Warren is going to be sorry he ever took that handoff. Roy Williams cracked him good. It's the kind of shot you wait for. Lamont Warren will run right into Roy Williams, who is coming straight ahead. The counter tray, right guard, right tackle, pull. And you can just feel this one. Roy Williams, a junior out of Houston, Texas. Third down. Stewart in the end zone. Touchdown, CU. It's the tight end, Christian Fourier, with the reception. Releases from the left side of the line and just a good throw by Cordell Stewart. Again, a lot on that pass. Fourier able to slide down the end zone, but that is a relatively easy catch. Because you can get your body, excuse me, unless you can get your body in front of the ball. Lotto the extra point. He has it. So the touchdown catch by Christian Fourier. And CU leads CSU 24-10. Be a mechanic, but you know your car, and you know little noises can mean big problems. At Walmart, we'll help you get the most out of your car as well as your dollar. Just one application of Slick 50 engine treatment provides protection against engine grinding and wear that motor oil may miss right from the startup. It's only $18.87 every day. Head to Walmart. We'll take care of you and your car for the many miles to come. Walmart, always the low price, always. The ultimate Ford sale at Big Mike Norton Ford. You'll save thousands during the biggest Ford sell-off ever held in Colorado. Forget retail, forget wholesale, but remember index pricing at Mike Norton Ford. It lets me sell selected Ford inventory below cost. Over 400 Fords ordered sold, with interest as low as 2.9. Ford wants them sold, and that's just what I'll do. The ultimate 48-hour Ford sale till midnight Monday in Aurora at Big Mike Norton Ford. 
Say, have you ever seen one of these? It's First Federal Bank's new Visa checking card. Use it like a credit card, but it works like a check. Your charges are paid automatically from your First Federal checking account. When you get the new Visa checking card, you can get a new First Federal checking account and your first box of checks free. With all that and the new Visa checking card, why not make First Federal your bank? Since 1885, First Federal, Colorado's convenient consumer bank. We'll get That's Chuck Heater, the right defensive here. coordinator of the CSU Rams. And last in the half, he has been leading the riot out to his players. Defensively, they've been able to hang in there, but two scoring drives here in the third quarter. They just gave up a touchdown play. Christian Fourier, the tight end for CU, made the catch. Last year, Fourier, as a freshman, made two catches all year, both for touchdowns. Today, he's got one catch for a touchdown. 24 to 10, CU leads, 6.28 to go, third quarter. Mitch Berger kicking off. This one shorter than the others. Gonzalez at his own two-yard line when he finally picks it up. And gets it to the 14. So the one chance the Rams have had to run back a kickoff today, the ball was bobbled. That last scoring drive for CU. Six plays, 69 yards, ending in the touchdown pass. Stewart to Fourier. First and 10 for the Rams, their own 14. Hill, sideline pattern. Primus. He is whacked, but he holds on. Chris Hudson did the whacking. Nice catch by Primus. Well, I'll tell you, great throw by Anthony Hill. Watch the route against the two-deep zone. Primus takes it up long enough to freeze the safety, then heads to the corner. That's a good catch. And actually, pretty good job of covering by Chris Hudson. Primus is going to make those catches. If he can get his hands on the football, he is strong enough to withstand that kind of blow. Honorable mention, All-American receiver last year. He's fourth on the CSU all-time catch list, and he's caught a ball in 25 games in a row now. First down for the Rams. Hill keeps it on the option. And gets thrown for a loss by Ronnie Wolfork. That'll be Wolfork's third sack on the day. Some scores from around the country. Clemson beat Ball State 24-10. Air Force down at the Academy, leading Rice in the third quarter by a touchdown. Second and 12 for CSU. Hill keeps again across the 40. He's still about five yards short of the first down. It'll bring up third and five. Marcellus Elder, the tackle. In this series, we've seen CSU get into their option package a bit more than they have previously. And Anthony Hill can run the option. Makes good choices, very quick and nimble. Those who pick CSU to finish ninth in the WAC, I think, are going to be a bit surprised. That's an insult to any Earl Bruce team. And he'll be the first one to tell you that. Third and five for the Rams. The Buffs blitzing. Hill caught by David Frisch. Very close to the first down. And I think the line judge spotted that thing right where Frisch went out of bounds. Good pass protection for Hill. Frisch will catch it, take the pop from Hudson, watch where he goes out of bounds. Tough to see from that angle. But right in front of us, I thought the spot was true. They're going to measure this one. David Frisch out of House Springs, Missouri. He's a transfer. Came over from Iowa Central. And the Rams have the first down. Their own 46-yard line. 4.48 to go third quarter. They're down by 14. And when CSU was down by 14 in the first half, they answered with the drive, resulting, of course, in a touchdown by long touchdown run by John Ivlow. 
down 14 for the second time of the game. They've got a pretty decent drive going again. Brown, a gain of one. John Kitasic there for the tackle. Junior out of Corona Del Mar. That'll bring up second and nine for CSU. While we have a chance, we'd like to extend our good wishes to a couple of gentlemen recovering from cancer surgery. One is a CU offensive lineman, Jason Perkins. And the other is Denver Post sports columnist Dick Connor. He underwent successful brain surgery this weekend at the University of Colorado Medical Center. Dick, if you're watching, all the best. Same to you, Jason. Absolutely. Brown on the pitch. He gets across midfield and down to the Buffs 43. Looks like he picked up the first down, too. Greg Lindsay, the tackle. And again, the option package this series for the first time that we've seen them really stick to it. The fake and the freeze by Hill as Wolfork has to play the quarterback. Good job blocking downfield. And Leonis Brown, once he turns the corner, we've talked about his great speed. He just he has to learn how to use that speed and use it to his advantage. Rams do garner the first down. They're at the CU 43. Hill will run. Dives down to the 36. Hill squeezes seven yards out of that play. Didn't play much last year. He only started one game, and that was against BYU on Halloween night national TV. What a position to be put into. Rams ended up losing that game to the Cougars, 40 to 17. Right now it's second and three. Leonis Brown, short of the first down, gets it inside the Buffs 35 yard line. Beaker at the tackle. best game last year came in the Rams opener against Arkansas State. He gained 80 yards. As Dave told you, he's got great speed. He's been timed as low as 4.2 seconds in the 40-yard dash. Second and two for the Rams. Excuse me, third and two for the Rams. Ivalo. More room up the middle. First down inside the 20. Down to the CU 17. Greg Lindsay finally ropes him. Same play they've run the option off of. This time they give to the fullback. The underneath handoff, you can see he runs into his pulling guard, but keeps his feet moving, and Pat Meyer trying to get a block. Stops Ivlo for a second. He was the only guy that stopped him, however. Well, he has had a heck of a game here this afternoon. He had more than 100 yards in the middle of the second quarter. First down for CSU at the 18. This is Brown. He turns that speed on and gets the ball inside the 10. Gain of nine on the play before Dalton Simmons stops him. Realizing this is the first game of the season, opponents that have Colorado on their schedule in the next few weeks are going to look at this and say, hey, we can run the football on this team. And that was something that CU was supposed to be able to shut down. You've got to give the Rams a lot of credit because they have completely outplayed up front CU. Second and two. Touchdown, CSU, Van Ward. And the Rams are right back in it. This play designed to go over left tackle, but Van Ward 
realizes that he's got a soft spot to the outside. And watch him set up the block at the goal line by Gonzalez. Blocking on Bradford right there. Ducks inside. Backs set up their blockers downfield by what they do with their feet. And CSU, once again, when they fall behind 14 points, they answer with a touchdown drive. Peter Ransaw, the extra point attempt. It's there. And the Rams are there, right back in the ball game. Down 24-17 to see you. 57 seconds to go, third quarter. Well, there's a big sale at Soundtrack. Where well, the prices are so low. Soundtrack won't play games with the biggest names, the ones that we all know. Like a Sony, a Mitsubishi, a Panasonic, a JDC. At Soundtrack, the prices are so low. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I love you people. Soundtrack. Big names, little prices. Guaranteed. News 4 presents the Dan Reeves Show, an instructional series helping you, the viewer, experience better football through television. Monday on the Dan Reeves Show, Les and Dan take a second look at the season opener against L.A. We'll try and stop the coach with a play from the past in distant replay. Plus, we'll have a special guest appearance by Monday night at 630, only on News 4. News 4 and the Dan Reeves Show, dedicated to better football through television. Well, I went to the gypsy woman and asked her to give me sign. She looked in the crystal ball and she said, 59.79.99. Now come to Taco Bell for breakfast. All your morning favorites served quarter style. The CSU Rams are a reflection of their head coach, Earl Bruce. Resilient, hard-nosed, straight ahead. Run it right at them. The Rams just scored a touchdown and are down 24-17 on CU's home field. The Rams about to kick off with 57 seconds to go in the third quarter. Here's your scoring drive. 11 plays, 86 yards. Van Ward capped it off with a nine-yard touchdown run. Look at the discrepancy in rushing. Well, you didn't figure Colorado to rush for as many yards, but you also didn't figure CSU to put 236 yards on him in less than three quarters. Michael Westbrook from his own three. And he gets it across the 25. Westbrook is still down and looks to be in pain, holding his right calf. Westbrook gathers this in, and he is a straight-ahead runner. He's a big guy. Took a tremendous blow right there. Looks like he got kicked in the calf. Well, and he got stepped on and did a headstand on him. Well, that's a blow. The number 39 on the CSU roster, we don't have even listed. I think after that shot, we'll try to find out. He is Mark Smith Sams, linebacker, 5'11, 240 pounds out of Tempe, Arizona. Just added to the roster today. Michael Westbrook taking off, seems to be okay. Proud of that hit. No flag on that play. So the Buffs will start with the ball, first down, at their own 26. Stewart escapes one, but not the other. And the man finally bringing him down is Kevin Lynch. Let's go down to the sideline and Mark McIntosh. Thanks a lot, guys. Some viewers might be wondering why in the heck would you have one of your star wide receivers running back kicks, but last year the CU Buffs were one of the worst NCAA Division I schools in returning kicks. They were like 101 out of 109 Division I schools. And Bill McCartney said, I know I'm taking a risk putting a guy as valuable as Michael Westbrook back there, but we've got to get some production on our kickoff returns.
second and sixteen. ECU. That pass incomplete. Westbrook back in the game, and that pass was intended for him. And boy, you, you see how the peaks and valleys of emotion have really been quite apparent in this game. CSU, they fall behind by 14 points. Looks like twice they're going to be out of the game. Boom, they come right back with a touchdown drive, and now you're seeing a very fired-up Ram defense. Third and 16. Going deep. Charles Johnson has it. And finally brought down by Andre Strode inside the CSU 20. I'll tell you what, two things on this play. I can't begin to tell you what kind of throw this is. Third down and 16. You'll see Charles Johnson just run straight up the field. The bottom of your screen. He separates from Andre Strode there. Look where the throw hits him, though. You're sitting at home. You could make that catch. What a great throw by Cordell Stewart. And that play ends the third quarter. We'll change sides. And the buffs are threatening. We've worked like dogs on the remodeling. The new look clubhouse at Mile High Greyhound Park. Here comes Rusty! Mile High Greyhound Park, now with trackside dining too. Visit Leather Center during our Labor Day sale and you'll discover more than handmade craftsmanship in everything we make. You'll also find 50% off comparative prices because for a limited time, America's largest manufacturer retailer of leather furniture has cut every sofa, sectional, recliner, and chair in half. You'll never get more out of a piece of furniture. Leather Center. When you design it, build it, and sell it yourself, you can sell it for less. We're taking you on a ride to introduce a sweeping change in weather forecasting. News 4's Double Doppler, keeping you two steps ahead of the storm. Today's game is brought to you by Metro Brokers, by State Farm Insurance, and by Europtics. All proud companies for Colorado. And also by Mile High Greyhound Park, and by the Buffalo Sports News. Boy, this is a killer defensively. You've got him down third and 16, and you let something like this happen. Cordell Stewart launches this, and then watches Charles Johnson run underneath the pass. He caught it about the 34-yard line. Stewart let that one go from almost his 15. So a pass that traveled in the air, 57, almost 60 yards, and why not be happy about that? Listen to this stat, David. Charles Johnson, three catches, 150 yards. Michael Westbrook also has 100 yards receiving today. The Buffs first down from their own 16. Into the end zone goes Cordell Stewart, but incomplete. The intended receiver was Fourier. And into the turf went Cordell Stewart, courtesy of Brian Schneider once again. Schneider playing a great ball game. He was this state's high school defensive player of the year in 1988 at Pomona High School. Ray Carruth now in at wide receiver for the Buffs. They go up the middle with James Hill inside the 15. A gain of three. Lewis capes the tackle. Along with Brady Smith. So look at Mike Berry, the Buffs offensive line coach. A bit disappointed in that last play. It's third and eight. The crowd on its feet. Trying to help the Buffs put some more points on the board. They lead by seven. We're at the start of the fourth. Complete to Fourier this time. He fights his way down to the ten. Well short of the first down. Kareem Ingram held him back. Pretty good job of the CSU defense. Once again, a blitz pickup forcing... 
Stewart to see Fourier in the flat. Both players recognize the blitz, but a good job of tackling after they do blitz. Pat Blotto on for a 28-yard field goal attempt. And he's perfect. So Blotto gives the Buffs a 10-point lead once again. It's 27-17. We're only about a minute and a half into the fourth quarter. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you at Colson Field. The CSU Rams trying to end a five-game losing streak. That's how they ended the last season. The Buffs finished their last season with a loss in the Blockbuster Bowl. A final record of 8-3-1. and one. You think opening games can sometimes be a struggle. Every coach likes to get the opening game under his belt. Northwestern Notre Dame in the second quarter are tied at seven. No benefit of a preseason game like the NFL. That's right. They all count. You can't invite another school in and say, all right, let's hit each other for a time or two and get ready for the regular season. The best you can do in college football is three or four non-conference games before you get into the real deal and play for those conference championships. Mitchburger to kick off. Jeremy Burkett and Billy Gonzalez to return for CSU. The first time Burkett is back there. This is Gonzalez, one yard deep. And he is piled on at the 20. A return of 21 yards. Ryan Helms the tackle. So the Rams down by 10. Will start with it at their own 20. CSU didn't waste any time getting back to work this fall. The first day out, the first day they could. Full pads and live hitting. He'll complete to Primus. And he gators his way across the 30. Primus' third catch today. Primus, you'll see again just running the crossing route. He understands the zone. Watch him give Hill a good target. Gets right in that soft seam, and Greg Primus is going to catch many passes this year for CSU. He's a guy that must be included every week in the game plan. A first down for the Rams. They're at their own 31. And a Ram jump. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. That'll push him back five yards. So it'll be first and 15 for CSU. Penalties on the day so far. Colorado State hurt the most. Six for 40 yards. from their own 26. And Hill will go no further than that. Brought down at the line of scrimmage by Beaker. This was a quarterback draw, and Hill got a little bit anxious to get into the play early. Brian Diet with good penetration. You can see not much room for Anthony Hill to run. Greg Baker, two years in a row, let these buffs and tackles. Second and 15. Hill sidewinds it, but incomplete. The intended receiver was the tight end, Frisch. That'll bring up third and long. 
Let's go down to the CSU sideline now and Jim Hanson. Jimmy? Well, last, uh, last time with Otis Hamilton, uh, the star of the CSU defense last year, coming back for his senior year, injured his knee, so he's sitting out the year. He's helping coach a little bit. You must like what you see so far, Otis. Definitely a good game today, and uh, defense and, and offense is playing real hard for us, like we expect them to do. You, you, I bet, have wanted to come off the field and make a tackle or two. Probably more than two, more than two times. And you're, two times. you're trying to help out a little bit. Right, I'm putting my two cents in where it's needed and uh, just trying to let them know what I see, uh, what might help us at times. Now the offense is doing the job. Right, offense has to get a, a good drive here. Ten points down with uh, 11 minutes to go, and we got to put something together. Good drive here. All right, thank you, Otis Hamilton. Uh, sitting out his senior year, a sad story. Back up to you, Les. Thanks, Jimmy. It's too late for a good drive on that possession because Chris Hudson for the Buffs broke up that pass intended for Primus. So CSU will punt. Mark Antonio will do the punting, and Chris Hudson, who just made that play, will do the receiving. Otis Hamilton and Raymond Jackson, two defenders on the CSU team, out with injuries. A good punt fielded at the 32. And Hudson might have gotten one yard out of that return. A 42-yard punt by Mark Antonio. We're going to take a break with 11.45 to go, final quarter. Introducing the Great American Cheeseburger with an Italian accent. It's Wendy's new 99 cent Junior Mozzarella Cheeseburger. It's a thick slice of rich mozzarella melted on top of Wendy's fresh beef. And to make it even more delicious, we created a zesty Italian herb sauce. Wendy's 99 cent Junior Mozzarella Cheeseburger. A delicious new addition to Wendy's 99 cent Super Value Menu. Okay, Dave, you're on. It's a more Shop the easy way for a used car at Gateway Mazda because every sale price is clearly marked on the windshield. Like this 91 Chevy Corsica for just $79.88 or $175 down $175 a month. This 91 Hyundai Scoop just $79.88 or $175 down $175 a month. Or how about this 89 Mazda 323? Our price just $49.88 or $131 down $131 a month. You'll find these and a lot more at Gateway Mazda now. The Buffaloes, the Baylor Bears, payback time. Last year, the Baylor Bears clawed their way to victory over the Buffs. This year, the Buffs are out for revenge. Hi, I'm Les Shapiro. And I'm Dave Logan, inviting you to join us from deep in the heart of Texas. Where the Buffs are going to try to kick up some dust against Baylor. Yeehaw. It's a wild time in Waco. See you, Baylor, Saturday morning at 11 only on News 4. Brought to you by these companies for Colorado. CSU cheerleaders and pom-pom squads praying for a comeback. The Rams are down to the Buffs, 27-17. See you with the ball. First down running play. A couple of yards. James Hill, the carrier. Oh, we just got word from the CU sideline that receiver Michael Westbrook has a cramp in his right leg. That's why he's not in the lineup right now, but he will return. And attendance for today, including media credentials, 52,164, the largest opening day crowd in CU history. Second down. Stewart over the head of Westbrook. Bring up third and seven. Talk about the future of CU football. Offsides penalty against CSU. Cordell Stewart, a sophomore. Michael Westbrook, a sophomore. Lamont Warren, a sophomore. Eric Mitchell, a sophomore. TJ Cunningham, a freshman. Charles Johnson, a junior. I mean, very, very few seniors on this team. Offensive line is very young also. Yep. So tack on the five-yard penalty against CSU, and that brings up second and two for the Buffs. James Hill across midfield has the first down, down to the 46 of the Rams. 
Greg Myers the tackle. This is really the first opportunity to have uh, James Hill show his running ability. The counter tray, you can see a good block there by Anderson, and Hill able to get into the, excuse me, Derek West got the block, and Hill able to get into the secondary. James Hill gave them once again that great speed at fullback, but now quite a change to play in the one-back offense for him. Out of Whitefield High School in Colorado Springs. First down. Incomplete. T.J. Cunningham, the receiver. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh on the CU sideline. Mark? Thanks a lot, Les. You know, earlier in the ballgame, you were talking about Lamont Warren and how he put on some weight to get ready for this year. Well, James Hill went the opposite direction. You know, he was trying to play fullback the previous two seasons, and he really wasn't a fullback, but he put on weight for that. This year, he dropped about 10, 15 pounds to get ready for that one back. Back up to you guys. Bill McCartney. 52 just last week and a birthday. This pass complete to Westbrook inside the 30. They're going to call him out of bounds back at the 25-yard line. CSU has hurt CU with the blitz before. Schneider, number four, will be at the bottom of your screen. Right side, he is coming on the blitz, and Cordell Stewart sees him. That ball, as you just saw, in the air before Westbrook even got into his break. Forget getting out of his break. Westbrook hadn't even started to chop his feet a bit to get into the break. Great throw by Stewart. Good job of recognizing the blitz by CSU. Another first down for the Buffs. They're at the CSU 25. Here they come again. Same play. That time, Westbrook couldn't come up with it. Understanding the offense, when you see a blitz as a quarterback, you've got to hope your receivers see the same thing, or as they say, are on the same page. And Brian Schneider has been all over Cordell Stewart today. As a receiver, you break your route when you see certain blitzes come, and you obviously change on the run. Cordell Stewart's numbers for the afternoon, 354 yards. Not bad for your first start in college ball. Second and ten. Not bad for your last start. <laughs> this pass complete to Car Charles Johnson. He has the first down, down to the 11. Sean Moran and Derek Roth finally stop him. Good pass protection by the offensive line, and Stewart again stays in the pocket. When you're a good athlete, you, you tend to want to get out and make things happen with your feet. Stewart allows the play to develop, and Charles Johnson does a nice job of un uncovering and giving St Stewart somebody to throw the ball to. First and goal for the Buffs from the 10. Lamont Warren. Down to the 7. Matt Rude, the tackle. Second and seven for CU, from the seven. They're up by 10, trying to increase it. Charles Johnson, touchdown, CU. No, they say he juggled the ball right after he caught it. No touchdown. He had one foot in, he just didn't have complete possession. Again, the blitz on its way. Stewart sees it. This is a pinpoint throw. One foot is down. Tough to see if Johnson hit. No, absolutely. Good call. The ball does pop up. That'll bring up third and goal from the seven. Boy, Stewart is right on the money today. 368 yards in the air. We're told that is a school record. His first game as a starter, and he's breaking records already. This time, Stewart, incomplete. That one intended for Lamont Warren. And that brings up fourth down. The Buffs will go for the field goal. Already up 27-17.
Pat Blotto, a 24-yard attempt. Flags on the field. The kick is good. Let's see what the flags are all about. It's a legal procedure against CU. You're exactly right, Mr. Logan. That'll push him back five yards. So don't put the three. Legal procedure. Offense. Repeat the extra point. Five-yard penalty. He said repeat the extra point. It's repeat the field goal attempt. Yeah. Blotto kicks this thing like he's kicking a 50-yard field goal. I wonder if in the next few games they might try to get him to take a little bit off. But he hammers this like a kickoff. He's, he's kicked every, every opportunity the same way. So now it's a 29-yard attempt for Blotto. And he's good again. They took the three points off, then they put it right back on. The Buffs lead 30 to 17. We've got 9.06 to go. It was the year one league. The gods were powerful and could choose to destroy our universe. At midnight, I heard the high priest give the sacred command to light the new fire. A tiny spark was kindled and the new fire swiftly carried to every temple. The gods were very pleased. Our Aztec world would live on. Another big holiday weekend. Romeo, what do you have planned? A little volleyball? Soundtrack. Barbecue? Big sale at Soundtrack. A little mountain biking? You mango sale at Soundtrack. Oh, yeah. On stereos, TVs, computers, camcorders, VCRs, all the big names. Maybe a little girl watching? Girls? Where? Hey, I work the Soundtrack. Come on up and see my big screen TV. Soundtrack. Big names, little prices. Guaranteed. You may not be a mechanic, but you know your car. And you know little noises can mean big problems. At Walmart, we'll help you get the most out of your car as well as your dollar. Just one application of Slick 50 engine treatment provides protection against engine grinding and wear that motor oil may miss right from the startup. It's only $18.87 every day. Head to Walmart. We'll take care of you and your car for the many miles to come. Walmart. Always the low price. Always. CU's Bill McCartney on the left, CSU's Earl Bruce on the right. Long time and friendly rivals. Goes all the way back to their days in the Big Ten. McCartney coached for Michigan and Earl Bruce coached Ohio State. Right now, McCartney with a pretty good start to his 11th season at CU. Up 30 to 17. The kickoff is a short one. And the run back by Tom Romero is out to the 30-yard line. We talked about Cordell Stewart breaking the record of most yards gained by passing in a, in a contest. 361 yards, the old record, held by Randy Essington against Nebraska here in Boulder, October 9th of 1982. Stewart, in his first start of his career, has established himself as the new record holder. Not a bad way to kick it off. CSU down by 13. The ball at their own 30. That pass broken up by Greg Lindsay, the junior out of Carson, California. Lindsay played all 12 games last year, mainly on special teams. Got some time at defensive back. Today, He's replacing Dwayne Davis in the starting lineup. Davis out with an injury. In fact, the Buffs are missing three starters in the secondary. Eric Hamilton suspended for the whole year. His college career is over. Dion figures suspended Hurry for up. one game. Davis is injured. the field taken by CSU we've got 855 to go final quarter oh, I 
if you just can't get enough Broncos coverage, then this week's Sports Extra is for you. This week, the Broncos' Steve Sewell will analyze the Broncos' first game against the Raiders. Plus, we'll have up-to-the-minute coverage from both the Broncos and the Raiders' locker rooms. Also this week, relive the final regular season minor league baseball game ever played in Denver. A tribute to the Denver's efforts. Join News 4's Gary Miller for Sports Extra this Sunday night at 11.05 following the Bill McCartney Show right here on News 4, your sports station. Plenty to cheer about on the buff side of the field. 30 to 17 lead. Let's go to the other sideline now where Jim Hanchett is standing by with the Rams. Oh, that's uh, next week the Rams open their home season with Idaho up at Hughes Stadium. Doesn't get any easier for them, though. They play uh, LSU and Fresno State back-to-back -back on the road before they get back home to Hughes. So it's a, a tough first four games for, these, uh, for this young team. Fresno State Bulldogs, a new member of the WAC. Consistently a very good team. Hill on the keeper. Gets one yard out of it. He's lying. The we haven't called Chad's name a lot today. He's an All-American candidate at linebacker. He's having back spasms today, and he looks like he's having them right now. He also has a soft cast on his right hand. He broke it early in the fall practice. Brown holding his back. Third and nine for the Rams. Hill going deep. Nobody within 15 yards of that, at least no Ram receiver. The only man close to it was the quarterback for CU, Dalton Simmons. And the Rams are going to have to punt. They're going to have to get something going here fairly quickly. We've got 8.08 to go in the final quarter. There's Chad Brown holding that back. Mark Antonio to punt. Chris Hudson to receive. Bobbles the snap, but still gets off a decent kick. And Hudson calls for a fair catch at his own 33. So with exactly eight minutes to go, the Buffs have the ball and a 30 to 17 lead. That punt went 36 yards. If you're interested in being a part of the studio audience for the Dan Reeves show, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope with several choices of dates to Dan Reeves Tickets, P.O. Box 5012, Denver, Colorado, 80217. The Dan Reeves Show airs live Monday nights at 6.30 right here on Channel 4, the home of the Denver Broncos. Cordell Stewart into the open field. A penalty as Stewart goes out at the CSU 33. The penalty was called as Charles Johnson tried to block Andre Strode. Holding. Spot foul. Ten yards. I'm not sure as to which player he called the holding on, but it was on one of those two. Charles Johnson, it's, it's against CJ, so Johnson trying to block Strode. At the end of the run, you can see he's got his left hand under the right armpit of Strode. And, hey, defensive backs don't like that. You see the little, hey, quit holding. You know, I don't like it when people put their arm under my armpit either. Then I can assure you neither do that. Take 10 yards off where Cordell Stewart went out of bounds, and the Buffs still have a nice gain out of it. They're in CSU territory at the 46. First down for the Buffs. Penalty flag again. Dead ball, illegal procedure. Offense, five yards, first down. She's smiling, but you can bet nobody's smiling on the CU sideline. Two penalties in a row. And they are back in their own territory at the 49.
First down and 16 yards to go. Stewart. That ball bobbled by Eric Mitchell, incomplete. Vincent Booker, the coverage. First, Chad Brown, we talked about his back spasms being worked on by the CU medical staff. That hurts me just to watch. You get a sore back, I mean, you can't do anything. You sure can't play football the way you want to. He's had this for most of the preseason. You speak like a man with experience. That's why I stand and I sit and I move and I never stay in one place, even when I sleep. Folks, you should have seen him on the trip to Berlin. <laughs> Lamont Warren. Oh. Escapes a few tacklers, first down. And down to the Rams 20 with flags flying. Andre Stroh, the tackle finally. There might have been a late hit there. Well, there's definitely a late hit. We've talked about Warren's ability to run through tacklers and be Hit smooth ball. about it. Personal foul. Defense. First down. You hear the call. Personal foul. You'll see the late hit right there. But Lamont Warren, with the added weight, 200, uh, excuse me, about 195 pounds, now has the strength to run through a lot of arm tackles. And a good job by Strode just hauling him down, preventing a touchdown. The Buffs with a first down and goal to go at the 10 yard line. A 30 to 17 lead. Warren stopped for a loss of one. Chris Duker threw him. Senior out of Costa Mesa, California. 7.15 to go, final quarter. Bill McCartney talking to Mike Berry, who coaches the center and both guards. Chad Brown still in pain on that lower back. You can see him grab it on the field. I don't know if we'll see him again. Second and 11. Complete. Fourier down to the six. Kareem Ingram, the coverage. Once again, the blitz and Brady Smith will come from the left side of the screen again, right in Cordell Stewart's face. Untouched. That ball is on the money before Fourier actually gets into his route. And that's a tough thing to teach any quarterback, especially a young one, to let go of the football before the receiver gets out of the break. Stewart's done a nice job of that this afternoon. Third and goal from the six. Two wide receivers lined up to the left of Stewart. And he wants one of them. Touchdown, CU, Michael Westbrook. When you have a receiver 6'4 and 2'10, once he gets his body in front of yours, it's going to be tough to get around him. And Vincent Booker let Westbrook get inside a slant pattern and that's a place where a, a receiver with size has a distinct advantage. Lotto the extra point. It's good. And the Buffs now with a 20 point lead. We've got 6-12 to go at Folsom Field. Dogs give you a good run for your money. Our dogs always fetch the paper, too. Mile High Greyhound Park, live racing at 62nd in Colorado. Looks great. But come on, I mean, you know, you could have gotten yourself another BMW or a Lexus. I suppose. But why? This had everything I wanted. Power, great handling, ABS. Yeah, but... Airbag, sir. leather, everything. I couldn't see spending 10, 20,000 more for what? Who makes it? Pontiac. It's the new Bonneville. 
Nice. See your Colorado Pontiac dealer. People are always asking me, so how does it feel to come home to Colorado? Well, I could never have guessed how good it would feel. Here, I can walk down the street where my dad taught me to ride a bike and where my sister and I used to climb trees. And the people here are so warm and friendly, down to earth. I like that. I also like the sense of optimism there is about the future here. But you must feel it. You've made Colorado your home, too. In East Border and the people of News 4. Vincent Booker in the slot is playing Michael Westbrook head up. The problem is he gives him the inside. And again, at 210 pounds and 6'4", once a receiver gets that kind of inside break, tough to go around his body. Michael Westbrook has had a sensational game and only a sophomore. He's going to break a lot of records before he's done. Is that a situation where you look to see how the defender plays you and then you decide whether to go inside or outside? No. Or was it designed for him to I'm, go inside? I'm sure it's designed for him to go inside. And Unless you have inside help, and especially at the goal line, you got to get up, get up on those receivers. You must take away the inside, force him to go outside. Mitch Berger kicking off for Kett and Gonzalez to receive. 6-12 to go, final quarter. The Buffs lead it 37-17. No run back on this one. This ball went into the stands behind the end zone. And a nice catch, too. The bionic leg of Mitch Berger. Keep it. Look at him. Keep that ball. No, this isn't baseball. <laughs> You've got to return those babies. They're worth about 50, 60 bucks a piece. Well, you're getting your wish, kids. The Buffs lead it by 20 and CSU is going to have to go to the air Anthony Hill saw everybody was covered so he ran with it up to the Buffs 30 yard line he's close to the first down Leonard Renfro the stop he does have first down yardage Bill McCartney at those little crow's feet from worry, but I think he can stop worrying here now. Under six minutes to go. Although you tell that to a coach and he says he never stops worrying until the final gun sounds. First and ten for the Rams, their own 30-yard line. They need and they need quickly. Wide open, Primus. The only man to beat was Steve Roska. Well, this is a play that it's a nice crossing route again, which Primus has been successful on, just getting out actually into the flag pattern. But Dalton Simmons has a chance to end this play quickly right there. He either lost his footing or simply went down too low and and Greg Primus, what a good receiver he is. Sure-handed, runs great routes, and a pretty good afternoon so far. Pretty good student, too, pre-med. Wants to be an orthopedic surgeon. That way he can fix up all the injuries his teammates suffer. <laughs> First down for the Rams from the CU 40. This is Ivalo, who's had a wonderful afternoon running the ball. He's inside the 30. Dalton Simmons the stop. CSU has used this play just a fullback trap, and Ivalo bounces through the line of scrimmage. This guy's lost a, a few pounds from last year. We added quickness to his game, and he has showed that here. 5'10", uh, 222 pounds. First two guys are going to be doing a lot of that in the next two years. Two sophomores. Michael Westbrook and Cordell Stewart. CSU, a first down. The CU 28. A little option offense now. Van Ward inside the 20, down to the 18. And a pickup of another 10 yards. Well, CSU, when they've been able to get into the option, really has done a good job. Van Ward following a good block. 
ambles into the secondary and picks up the first down. I don't know if you noticed at home, but CS or excuse me, CU is playing with its second team defense the last couple of plays, and Bill McCartney saw what was happening, and the first stringers are right back in. CSU with a first down at the Buffs 18. Hill with time, complete. And down to the 12-yard line before Dennis Collier made the stop. That pass caught by Jeff Grenier. Hey, I think Anthony Hill is going to be a very good player. He seems to have relaxed a bit in this game, and I think CSU has really played quite well offensively and pretty well defensively, too. I can see why Earl Bruce is so high on Anthony Hill. Second and five. Under three and a half minutes to go, final quarter. The first man through, Ivalo, gets it inside the 10. He's about a yard short of the first down. Greg Beekert, the tackle. up third and one the clock winding down under three minutes Colorado State with just one timeout left CU has three left Hill on what looked like a broken play he might have picked up the first down I think, Les, it's the same play that they picked up a first down with before. He fakes with the fullback, a little quarterback counter. And it looks like you're right. He did get enough yardage for the first down. Fakes with the quarterback. It's actually an option play. And Hill, doing a good job feeling pressure from the outside, ducked it up inside much quicker than designed. This is going to be an option down the line. And Hill sees Chad Brown, takes it right up the heart of the defense. Hill is about a foot short of the first down. Rams have to go for it. 210 to go. Tripped up by his own man. Pat Meyer, the left guard, while going back to give pass protection, tripped up the ankle of Anthony Hill. Robust T, they fake, and Meyer got knocked off by Ted Johnson. Johnson, number 46, will hit the guard and actually send him back into the feet of Anthony Hill. CU takes over on downs. 2.03 to go in the final quarter. The Buffs with a new quarterback in the game. That is Duke Tobin, the junior out of Arlington Heights, Illinois. This is interesting. They want to avoid having to put Coy Detmer, the freshman, in the ball game because they're afraid... He would use up a year of eligibility. They would like to redshirt him if possible. James Hill up the middle. And Vance Joseph, who would normally be the second string quarterback, is not playing today because of a shoulder problem. I'll tell you this, based on how Cordell Stewart has played, there is no reason to play Coy Denver. If you play one play, if you're not injured, you lose your redshirt year. And Stewart, 21 of 36 today, through one interception through four touchdowns and 409 yards of passing alone. A CU record, passing in one game. Cordell Stewart in his first start. James Hill again. He is twirled at the 33. Less than a minute and a half to go. CU up by 20 points. James Hill was worried when CU went to its one-back offense this year that there would be no room for a guy like him. But he's gotten a lot of work this afternoon. Hill was the starting fullback last year. They don't use a fullback in this offense. Under a minute to go. Short of the first down. Steve Norton, the tackle. 
Junior out of Cincinnati. Well, you see a lot of heads hung down low on CSU sideline. Earl Bruce right in front of you there. Can't be too happy with the season opener. I'll tell you what, I, I, I kind of disagree. I think he's going to be unhappy he lost, but I think he's seen some positive things from both the offense and the defense. They were overmatched coming in, but he got a great effort and pretty good execution, too. That's Scott Phillips with his first carry. Norton the tackle again. The clock stopped at 11 seconds. And the fans starting to filter out of Folsom Field. And now the official starts the clock again. The Buffs taking their helmets off on the field. That is that. So Bill McCartney going to midfield to shake hands with his old rival Earl Bruce. The Buffs open with an impressive 37-17 win over CSU. Some high points for both teams. But those of you who were worried about CU's new offense, well, worry no more. Looks like they're going to be fine in the hands of Cordell Stewart, the sophomore out of Louisiana. CSU has a lot to smile about also. Anthony Hill looks like he's going to be a pretty good one at quarterback, the sophomore out of San Diego. John Ivlo for CSU. Well over 100 yards rushing. Charles Johnson and Michael Westbrook, receivers for the Buffs. Well over 100 yards receiving. Some big plays on defense for both sides. Roger Kinney holding the Centennial Cup to be presented for CU. To CU, I should say. one for the trophy case at CU. And right now, let's go to the field and Mark McIntosh. Thanks a lot, guys. Bill McCartney coming this way. Coach McCartney, we're live here. New sport. A quick comment about Cordell. School record passing today. Great, great start for him. I didn't know what his stats were. What were his stats? I think he was over 400 yards. 409 yards. Well, obviously, the game <laughs> well, wasn't pretty. Cordell did some spectacular things, and so did some of the outstanding athletes that we have and so I'm happy about that but there's a lot of work to be done and that was very apparent I know it didn't surprise you that Earl Bruce's team came out here and gave a great effort no the, the CSU kids always fight and uh, we always have a high regard for her. defensively they were very able to run up the middle on you in the first half what was going on there they were they're, they're trap. Yeah, they, the trap they, they hit the trap on us twice once they caught us in a stim and I'll have to see the films. I don't know why we didn't have a safety front those balls up. All right, Coach Bill McCartney, he'll head into the locker room there to talk to his guys. And, of course, we'll have a whole lot more with Coach Bill McCartney tomorrow night on the Bill McCartney Show. Back up to you guys. All right, thanks, Mark. And we're giving you a trophy for finally corralling Coach Mack. There's your final. We'll be right back to wrap it up. I needed a larger warehouse for my business, so I went to the Big T. We needed a bigger house for our house, so we called the Top Dog. When you call a Metro broker, you're dealing with a box, because each broker owns their own company. They're making it happen all over Colorado. <laughs> Why read the Rocky Mountain News? Because we've got personality. Why the personality? As Nuggets coach, I know plenty about personality. But to enjoy it at half the price, I read the Rocky Mountain News. Call 892 News and you can save 50% too. It's back. Labor Day.
Labor Day weekend at the Toyota Warehouse. The race to fame. It's simply the biggest Labor Day weekend sale in warehouse history. There's a price for everyone. New Tercels from $59.88. New 4x2 truck from $69.88. Save $6,000 on a new Toyota this weekend. A multi-million dollar used a new vehicle inventory has been assembled. And every car and truck has been drastically reduced. Don't miss the race to save. Going on now with Douglas Toyota. The Toyota Warehouse. Take 104th Avenue west of I-25 in Thornton. Another big holiday weekend. Romeo, what do you have planned? A little volleyball? Soundtrack. Barbecue? Big sale at Soundtrack. A little mountain biking? Humongo sale at Soundtrack. Oh, yeah. On stereos, TVs, computers, camcorders, VCRs, all the big names. Maybe a little girl watching? Girls? Where? Hey, I work the Soundtrack. Come on up and see my big screen TV. Soundtrack. Big names, little prices. Guaranteed. Well, the CU marching band sending everybody off home. The final score, 37-17 at Folsom Field. CU a winner over the CSU Rams. And Dave, I've never heard a coach talk about an ugly win when you win by 20, but that's what Bill McCartney said. Well, I think he was telling the truth. As good as the offense was from time to time, they did commit, I think, four turnovers. And defensively, the team that was supposed to carry the entire unit did not play very well uh, in spurts. So I think Bill McCartney has a perfect scenario. He got the win, and yet he can go back in this week and say, hey, we're not nearly as good as we think we are, and they'll get better before the Baylor game. Conversely, I think just the opposite for Earl Bruce, even though they lost, he's got to say, hey, this shows me and you guys that we can play with a nationally ranked team. We're going to be a good football team this year. We just have to keep our heads up and continue to work hard. They do not look like a team that's going to finish near the bottom of the WAC conference. And we know the CU Buffaloes will be right up there competing for the Big 8 title once again. So the final score from Folsom, 37-17, CU over CSU. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Today's game produced by Terry Trevato, directed by Tom Richards. We'll see you next Saturday from Waco, Texas, when the Buffs take on Baylor. For Dave Logan, Mark McIntosh, and Jim Hanchett, this is Les Shapiro saying so long from both.